Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! We are moving home. From Wednesday the 26th of January, Sewing Street and Yarn Lane are moving to Freeview Channel 73. We will still be on Sky Channel 670, YouTube and Facebook Live as normal. It's only the Freeview Channel that is changing. Keep your eyes peeled on our Facebook, Instagram and our email newsletter for more details. And if you watch us on Freeview, don't forget to tune into Freeview Channel 73 from 8am on Wednesday the 26th of January. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Do you love sewing? Are you creative, inspiring, and love to share your skills and tips with others? We're excited to announce Sewing Street Search for a Star 2022. We're looking for talented sewists of all genres. Dressmaking, quilting, homewares, and needlecraft. To join the Sewing Street family and share their sewing wisdom with our viewers. Live on air. To enter to become our next guest designer, all you have to do is send us a video submission of you introducing yourself and a brief demonstration of some sewing. Send your video to studio at sewingstreet.com with the subject, search for a sewing star. If you have any issues, email us and director Elliot will be sure to help. Please keep your videos under three minutes in length and in landscape. For more information, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Good, Good luck. luck. Hello everybody, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a wonderful, fresh start to the day. It's Wednesday, it's hump day, we're there, we're on that cusp. How are you today? It's wonderful to have your company here on channel 73. <laughs> 23, just sending you somewhere else completely. It's my birthday next week and I'm obsessed with 23. I don't know why, because that happened decades ago. Anyway, anyway, how are you this morning? What are you working on? Have you got a lovely fresh project that you're working on? Are you working on something romantic for Valentine's Day? This morning, love is in the air. Let me tell you, Wendy Orlando is here, who I absolutely adore. And we've already been having a fabulous start to our day. And I can't wait to share all of that with you and to bring Wendy on. We're going to start with our early bird special. It's right here, right now. Now our Michael Miller panel, love panel is fabulous. I love a panel. Uh, you know, in the last year or so, I've really got into using panels because they create so much bang for your buck. You get such a lot here. Now, this is from Michael Miller, a name we know and love, a great American company. 
And this panel has got so many different elements to it. It's currently 10.99, but it's the early bird. You know that price is gonna come down, but let me show you the panel first. Uh, you've got these great floral um, panels within, three of them, L a home sweet home, love that. What about a bit of simple patchwork as a little in the entrance hall? Love lives here. There's another great little banner to create, either layered, quilted, or just, you know, kind of hem the edges. I would put something like either some tassels or some prairie points along the bottom, little tabs at the top and a rod through it. I mean, that would look so cute. You can get some really nice little uh, metal hangers as well. And then this one up here, floral, great for Mother's Day. I'm thinking Mother's Day projects or add some embroidery, beading embellishments, again, a little bit of patchwork, but also look at these other lovely elements to it, love. I mean, this would be fantastic, Cr used to create a, a quilt label for the back of a quilt, yeah? So I would use this and I would have a, a, you know, maybe a little extra section as well you could write things on, but some of these would make great quilt labels. The butterflies, I think, could be terrific pieced into a quilt or cushions. You could make some really lovely cushions or a nice wall hanging with, you know, those two elements maybe joined together. I would maybe even put like a little label, maybe with the name written in Latin, something like that. And then you've got this lovely, I think this is really cute, this section down here that looks like a stamp. Um, which again could make a really good pillow or cushion. So there's loads of great elements to this panel. You could also, of course, layer and quilt it as it is or add a border around it and create a lovely wall hanging or quilt. Now, currently the price is 10.99, but this is our early bird special. <laughs> Fabulous are the colors. So springy, isn't it? And I don't know about you, I'm ready for a spring project. That price has crashed down to $7.99. What an amazing price. Now, remember that price is only going to last until midnight tonight or until all of those panels are gone. Whichever comes sooner, I know which is going to come sooner. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And you're getting so much and so many projects for that $7.99, aren't you? Um, because I can see here, you know, three lovely mini quilts or banners using these larger panels. I definitely use one of these, probably either Love Lives Here, I think that one right there, Love Lives Here would be fantastic to have in your entrance, sort of hallway, porchway, something like that, or even put in the door, you know, if you've got like a um, glass topped front door something like that you could put that in the in the in the panel in the glass panel that will be lovely or the home sweet home again little mini quilt the other thing of course you could do with these is turn them into gift bags now um, a gift bag just make a really simple tote bag style you know front and back maybe box the corners if you want add some little handles I would use something like a solid or maybe a you know, modern marble or a grunge, something like that for the handles. And I'll be honest with you, with something like that, I would just use a lightweight interfacing on the back of the fabric. I would zigzag the seams and I wouldn't bother lining it because if I was giving it as a gift bag, I would probably use something like some nice brightly coloured tissue paper, probably use something like a bright pink or a peach, something like that, and have that tissue paper kind of spilling out of the top and then put the gift inside there. So you don't even see the inside of the bag, but they're lovely, aren't they? So you've actually got six different, seven in fact, different uh, panels to this. You've got your love, and they all have a sort of stamp theme really. Love, the two butterflies, those three, big floral panels look at the size of those and this square sort of stamp here loads of you saying good morning on facebook by the way let me return that uh v to jones morning to you my love how are you um donna good morning everyone smiley face love a smiley face donna morning to you <laughs> uh, good morning, Stuart and the team. Love you from Blackpool. Patricia, thank you so much. Sending love to Blackpool too. What is the weather like? Oh, the only time I've ever been to Blackpool, it was so cold. 
Well, it was January, in fairness, and it was very, very cold, but it was chilly. It was chilly. Um, our producer, Hannah, once ended up in Blackpool by accident because she fell asleep on the train. <laughs> Have you ever done that? I always worry that I'll do that, but um, yeah, I haven't managed it yet. <laughs> uh, good morning, Tina. Um, you're still watching on Channel 72? Okay, excellent. As long as you're watching, we don't mind how you watch. Remember, there's so many different ways you can watch us here on your computer, on your tablet, on your phone, on TV. It's a great way to connect. Let me show you how you can get in contact with us today because we love hearing from you too. Now, you can either message us through Facebook or through email. Let me show you the details for that. So you can message the studio, studio at sewingstreet.com. That's our email. And you can send things like pictures, what you're working on, crafting pets, your romantic makes if you're doing something romantic and gorgeous or springy, whatever you're working on, we love to see it. You can also message us on Facebook. So if you go to our Facebook page and just go Sewing Street TV, um, you can send in a message there as well. You can, of course, also message us on the website too. So if you go onto the website and then click on Watch Live, and then you'll be able to watch us. And then there's also send a message to the studio. There we go. Hello. Just hello. I'm Hannah. Oh, oh I just knew that before you typed the name. I, just, I knew that. And then you can see under there two columns. Um, well, first of all, you've got our early bird and our bestseller. So far, that lovely Michael Miller panel. And then you can go on to pre-order. Now the pre-order, hello, sincerely yours. This is gorgeous. It's a brand new collection from Moda. It is so beautiful. And not just for Valentine by any means. There's some wonderful purples, pinks, peaches. Look at that palette. It's like a gorgeous lipstick selection, isn't it? It's all beautiful lipsticky colors. Um, and then we've got some fabulous Henry Glass, Know Me Love, uh, which is adorable and a gorgeous panel too for making a fab quick quilt. It's got some lovely party pinks, um, solids and some um, texture prints as well. And then coming up later, we've got Wendy Orlando's Cozy Nights in Quilt. It's so gorgeous and beginner friendly too. There's that Rose Terrace Fat Quarter Pack. Now I've been talking about this on my Instagram and Facebook this week. I fell in love with these fabrics last week and then had to grab them, grab a bundle and make a big cushion. I'll show you that shortly. We've got lovely tools coming up, a great bundle of fabric from Beth Studley, extra large cutting mat. This does not give you any idea how big it is. I will show you later. It's a metre by a metre and a half. It is huge, so useful. It's the cutting mat of dreams. Then we've got our wonderful natural history collection with our birds and butterflies squares strips and fat quarters we've got some complementary solids there as well this is all coming up later great tools real essential tools the most covetable creative grids square up ruler ever um, that's coming up as well. And then we've got Wendy back with her amazing travel bag. Now, I am absolutely bagging this this one of these kits. Bagging it. Do you get that? Yeah? Yeah? I just throw these in. I don't even rehearse, you know. It's amazing. I do what I can. I do what I can. <laughs> just natural. Let's look at the menu, shall we? <laughs> shall we? Oh, I'm loving the... I'm loving those graphics. Love is in the air at 8 a.m. At 9 a.m. mode, a cozy up quilt with Wendy Orlando. Such a beautiful quilt that I love it. Um, and then at 10 a.m. we've got Quilters Tools and that's also the hour where we've got those fabulous fabrics that I used for the cushion. At 11, Wendy will be back with her travel bag. So excited for that. And then at 12 p.m., if you've never crocheted before and want to learn, this is the hour for you. If you want to take that granny square and move on a little bit, this is the hour for you too. 
We've got Wendy with her hot water bottle cover. It's gorgeous. It's a great project. We've also got every size of pom-pom maker you could ever hope for. I'm ridiculously excited about those because I don't know if you know this, but I do love a pom-pom. Uh, that's coming up at 12 o'clock over on Yarn Lane. Have you managed to get your Michael Miller panel yet? Be quick, won't you? It's absolutely glorious. There's so much on it and would provide so much inspiration. Now, let me just show you my sort of Casbah cushion that I made. <laughs> now, I made this. I just absolutely fell in love with these fabrics. Um, we've got them coming up at... Uh, 10 o'clock. Now as soon as I saw them I knew exactly what I wanted to do and that's always a good sign isn't it? I knew I wanted to just piece rectangles together in kind of staggered rows. Super quick and easy. I mean absolutely totally beginner friendly. Then layered that up with some batting and backing and quilted it and then just made it up into a massive cushion. Of course I had to add pom-pom edging because pom-poms make everything look better. And then on the back, I just, I had to use a bright red, why not? And I added a little strip of one of the fabrics. And this is actually the size of two pillows, two normal pillows. So it's absolutely perfect. You can store pillows or bedding, of course, in there. That would make, be nice. I might add something like a couple of poppers on the back if I was going to use it for storage. Um, but this I'm actually going to use as my yoga cushion. So when I'm doing yoga at home, I'm going to use this to, I like to perch on a cushion um, because I'm going to come back in a, another life as a Persian cat because <laughs> it's just lovely and comfy. Now, lots of you are already checking out on these fabrics. It's a great little bundle of fabric. You get 14 fat quarters in it. I thought there were 10 or 12, and then they were just kept coming. It was more and more. We'll look at this in detail at 10 o'clock. I will tell you how to make it as well. I'll give you dimensions and stuff when we get to it. Come with me. Come on. Come on. I mean, a lot of people have a cushion for their iPad, don't they? But I mean, that is a cushion for an iPad. Ding dong. Excuse me for one moment. Oh, and by the way, while I'm here, how lovely is this? This is Wendy's Cozy Up Quilt, which we've got coming up um, a little bit later today. Um, Wendy's also going to talk about how to do quilt as you go. So if you've ever fancied trying that technique, Wendy and I were talking about it the last time she was here. And then Wendy went away and tried it and has now decided that everything's going to get quilt as you go. So it's wonderful, isn't it, when you learn a new technique and suddenly, you know, it's your new favourite. I love that. Lots of you messaging in this morning. How wonderful. Thanks for getting in touch. Loads of you watching. Morning to all of you. Um, Suzanne, good morning, Stuart and the team. Have a great day from chilly but dry Aberdeen. Well, I mean, you can wrap up warm, can't you? But um, yeah, I don't mind cold but wet. Now, let's start with the Your Sincerely Mega Bundle. These fabrics are divine. Now you're saving the equivalent of um, $14.98 on this bundle. So it's like you're getting a whole meter of fabric for free here. Now if I went to a quilt shop and they were offering that, I'd be all over it. But I mean, my goodness me, we've got the most wonderful bundle. Now this whole mega bundle, it's too big to get on screen all in one go. Can you see, I'm gonna squish it together. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, within this bundle, you're getting 19 half metres of fabric and you've got some fabulous lights. You've got a gorgeous range of soft pinks and peaches. You've got the most amazing magenta and purple shades. And then you've got this almost red. It's more of an orangey red. It's absolutely beautiful. It's such a big, glorious bundle of fabric. Now, as soon as I saw this fabric, I thought quilts for teens because I think this colour palette is young and fresh and fun. It isn't babyish 
although you could absolutely use this for baby and toddler quilts and that would look gorgeous too but it doesn't have sort of a, a real baby theme to it at all it's hearts it's little dots it's tiny kisses if you're going to give me a kiss make it a tiny one i'm not i'm kidding i'll have a big kiss if you like um <laughs> big smooch you've got little daisies you've got sort of stylized flowers i mean there's just so many lovely lovely designs in this i'll kind of run through but it's all about that color palette i mean my goodness me love these little ditzes gorgeous hearts I've got to tell you, hello, hello. I mean, that is beautiful, isn't it? Just love it. Uh, so, Rich, we've got very few of these bundles. We've got very few of them. So be quick, won't you, if you're loving this. Look at those pretty florals. I mean, it's called Sincerely Yours, and it is launching at this time of year, you know, with Valentine, of course, in mind. But this is a general range, isn't it? Goodness me, for spring, for summer, for that gorgeous summery colour. This is pretty. This is gorgeous, isn't it? My friend Sal had a car that colour. She always had brightly coloured cars. Still does. Beautiful. But I'm imagining just something simple, you know, like Irish chain with something appliqued. Uh, hearts or big flowers, appliqued flowers or something like that. Just something simple or stars and chains. That would be really fun too. Um, would be great if you were making a quilt for, I'm thinking granddaughter, niece, daughter in particular. These colours were really appealing to those sort of teens, tweens and, and younger children. I think it would be lovely. But I mean, these just might suit your palette too. Absolutely lovely. You get half a metre of each one and uh, so many different options there. In total, you're getting nine and a half metres, but you're only actually paying for eight and a half metres, which is a fab, fab deal, isn't it? I mean, that's a really, really good price. Point. It's almost 10% off, isn't it? Fab, 19 different fabrics there. You're getting that whole collection. I mean, it's just wonderful. Love it. Now that bundle is selling really, really fast and we do have very limited quantities of it. It's a really good bundle there for instantly making a gorgeous quilt. Something like actually Wendy's Cozy Up Quilt would look amazing done in these fabrics, truly amazing. Um, some of the quilts that I've got coming up over the next week or two would also look terrific in that. So as a quilt bundle, ready-made quilt kit, perfect. But also for your stash, I mean, the colors are just glorious. It's like a whole makeup counter. Morning, Stuart and team. Where did it go? Come back. To read that message. <laughs> Morning, Stuart and team. <laughs> Look, we're a team. Come on. Looking forward to the show today. Have a fab day from Vanessa in the West Midlands. Mwah. Good morning to you, Vanessa. And can I say a really big good morning to my mum? Good morning, Mummy Hillard. Hope you're well. <laughs> Thanks for joining. All right, everybody. So this right now is the Sincerely Yours fabric bundle. It's brand new. It is absolutely gorgeous. First time out. The colours are sensational. The purples, the magentas, the peach and the pink. And then that lovely, warm, buttery cream as well there that you've got running throughout. It's light and fresh and modern. And unashamedly girly. Morning, Stuart. You cheer me up no end. It's my birthday on Sunday. Hey, we're twinning. It's my birthday next week. I would love you to wish me a happy birthday. Trudy, I want to wish you mwah, the happiest of birthdays. I absolutely adore birthdays, so I hope you get lots of cake and loveliness and hugs. Here's one from me. Uh, I'm just finishing piecing a cave quilt. Trudy, I'd love to see it. If you get a chance to send in a picture to the studio, I'd love to see that. Enjoy your birthday. Hope it's full of colour. Talking of colour, have you just joined us? Look at this. 
It's brand new today from Moda. It's called Sincerely Yours and it is a bundle of beautiful, beautiful pinks, magentas, purples, peach blossom in these gorgeous, very simple stylized florals. I love that because it means that if you don't want to really emphasize the floral, you it it doesn't it doesn't scream floral. It screams color and bright pattern. It's lovely, isn't it? All these different smashing Lucy's messaged in this morning. Morning from a chilly but bright peak district. Can't wait for my bundle of goodies I bought the other day. Plenty of things fell into my basket. They do that, don't they, Lucy? They just jump in all of their own accord. Oh, Lucy, thanks for getting in touch. If it's chilly out there, just stay in. Pop the kettle on. Get the sewing machine fired up. Or a bit of hand stitch. Do you hand stitch while you're watching? Or knit? I'm constantly knitting while I'm watching TV sort of justify sitting in one spot for me. Love that peach, it's beautiful, isn't it? And that's glorious too. Another little message coming up, thank you. Day off work, hurrah, Jennifer, lucky you. Well, I'm really glad to be here actually, I love it. Sewing my wind drifter quilt, oh, I love that. That's the one that's kind of turquoise and teal, isn't it? With the big flying geese that, love that one. Um, watching Sewing Street Live, perfect way to spend my birthday. Jennifer, mwah, happy birthday to you. How lovely. I hope this cake. I mean, sewing's great, but I mean, everything's improved with cake, surely. Happy birthday. Well, let me break this bundle down for you as well, because you can buy individual half metres, and it is brand new. This is a great time to get exactly the designs, the colours that you want. So why don't we start with the hearts? And what I'm going to do is show you a group of designs and then we'll kind of flash up on screen the individual codes as well. So this is the sort of largest group of designs. I think this is absolutely stunning. Okay, so I've laid out laid out those fabrics. I'm just going to move that over there a little bit just so that we can... There, that's better. Okay, so starting off with this one um, on screen. So I'll, I'll kind of point to the one that's on screen. This is that one that's got sort of all the different colours, the magenta, red, peach and pink, all over hearts. Gorgeous. Yours won't be blurry. <laughs> That's our picture. It's really crisp and divine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Next one. That deep purple. That might just be my favourite. Wouldn't these make gorgeous things like toiletry bags and vanity cases? The um, Wendy Orlando's travel bag that's coming up would look amazing in this. That is gorgeous, isn't it? Really lovely. Pillowcases and cushions. Collector's been in touch from Staffordshire. Morning. Would the mode of fabrics be okay for a dress? Absolutely. We'll talk about what kind of dress in a sec. I was thinking the So Girl button dress. I'm trying to remember the message now. Just finished one and love it. So going to make more. Collector, I don't know that dress in exactly, but so long as it's a dress that you can use woven fabric for rather than stretch or knit or jersey. Um, if a design needs stretch then um, cotton fabric won't work. But yeah, I mean absolutely quilt weight cotton is ideal for a lot of dressmaking. Dresses, skirts, tops, shirts, blouses, that kind of thing. Just no stretch in it so just keep that in mind. Um, wouldn't these be lovely for dressmaking? Now this one, absolutely beautiful. I love the fact that it's an orangey red. Orange is probably my most used colour in quilts and projects. I never realised until I was doing a big show and tell of quilts and I realised that like 10 quilts on the trot had had orange in them. Just adds vibrancy and life, doesn't it? Energy to a quilt or a bag or a project. 
So details are on screen for the orange. Geranium, that's a great description of that colour actually. I love it when I get to a train station and they have geraniums, red geraniums. It's a good sign. This one first, this is the coral. Just love that. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And again, so versatile for your stash. Little toiletry and makeup bags, little storage bags, things like that. But great for cushions, quilts. That's the coral. And then the last colour in that group, remember you can buy all of these individually by the half metre. This is our last one. Now our mega bundle is dwindling. If you love that mega bundle, be quick. This is Flamingo. Love that. And it is that lovely shrimp, shrimp pink. That's why flamingos are pink, isn't it? Because they eat a certain kind of shrimp that makes them go pink. Mm. There we go. So those are the hearts. Next grouping, what should we do? Florals? Yeah, let's go with this lovely daisy print. This is really cute. So this has got four colours in it, this daisy print. I'm going to grab this one first. This has been very, very popular on pre-order. I'll just open this up so you can have a look. Now, this would be an absolutely glorious one for dressmaking, I think, wouldn't it? I could totally see a nice summery dress made in that with a little collar. Pajama bottoms would be glorious, wouldn't they? Absolutely gorgeous. Bit of broderie anglais around the hems or storage baskets for your dressing table. Now, um, uh, living in loveliness, living in loveliness, Kerry does the most gorgeous hexagonal trays, doesn't she? She does a pattern. These would be gorgeous for that. You could do a little collection of different florals or hearts, make little heart baskets. Absolutely lovely. My friend Jackie at the moment is making um, bowl cozies uh, at the moment, which are absolutely beautiful, her own pattern, and they look great. And these kind of small prints look great for those sort of small projects. Um, and I am so into homemade soup at the moment. So a bowl cosy sounds like a very good idea. So that's the dark purple, been very, very popular on pre-order. Now this pink background is lovely. It's a really soft pink, um, this, and freshened up with that lovely green and white. None of the prints are over, overpowering, are they? They're all nice and soft and gentle. Little ditzy, daisy. Lend themselves very well to lots of different projects. This again, I think, would make lovely PJs. Our screen looks, can you see, it's just very slightly, a bit funny, isn't it, on screen? Is that making your eyes go funny? Um, it is a solid background. <laughs> and then little white daisies and those little green leaves. Ever so sweet. Um, and then we've got two more colourways. We've got a coral and we've got a cream. Let's do the coral one next. And again, it is that lovely sort of somewhere between peach and orange, you know, sits coral. Um, and that's really pretty. Love that. Very, very usable. A lovely message from Sue in Hampshire to share. Hi Stuart, messaged you before. My, oh yes, my lovely partner Ian bought me a sewing machine for Christmas. I do remember, Ian, you're a keeper. Just got your lovely bag for life book. Great for a beginner, Sue. Oh, thanks Sue, that's really kind of you. And hello to you and Ian. Hope you're both having a great day. Yep, I'm gonna be making some uh, project actually from Bags for Life on Friday on baby day, which I'm so excited about. I don't think there's gonna be an actual baby in the studio, but I'm bringing in a papoose anyway, just in case. Um, it might well have Mrs. Mills tucked inside it. Mrs. Mills really should make an appearance, shouldn't she? Um, and then last of all, <laughs> she would actually just sit in the papoose 
Ah, Hannah's allergic to cats, so we can't do that. That's a shame. <laughs> now, this is a print which could go in anybody's stash, I think, couldn't it? It's a lovely one. Got a really lovely, rich, um, sort of ecru background on this one. It's lovely and warm and still bright. Tiny little dots of magenta in the background. Really sweet, great. And that would be lovely actually for having a nice bright lining inside a bag. If you bought my Tilda um, string stars bag pattern, these fabrics would work so well for that. I'd go mega bundle. One good thing isolating for 10 days is getting to watch my favourite on Sewing Street, Stuart Hillard. Oh, that's a really sweet message, Susan. Thank you. I'm sorry you've had to isolate for 10 days. That must have been a bit of a drag, but I'm glad we've been able to chivvy you along. Um, back to work on Thursday. That's tomorrow, isn't it? Gosh. Well, I hope it all goes well tomorrow. Enjoy your last day. See, I'm saying enjoy it because I think 10 days, you know, of being able to feet up, do some sewing sounds quite appealing. But anyway, I hope it's been all right for you. Now, crisscross, crisscross. There are three of these, three different colourways. Again, all super useful, I think, for anybody's stash. I'm loving these prints that have got the different colours in them. These are beautiful. Beautiful. That is, that everyone should be getting a bit of that. That is lush. Absolutely beautiful. It's a great design that, isn't it? The scale is super. Let me just pop my hands in so you can see the scale. Just very briefly, because I've got a broken nail. Sorry. I feel like I've really let everybody down there. I'd like to have nice nails, and I used to, but I'm afraid working on the farm a lot, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, the goats have got lovely nails. They, we, did, we did hooves the other day. We had a day doing hooves, and, but mostly we were cuddling baby goats. Charlie was, was cuddling each goat, and then I was doing feet. And to begin with, goats are real drama queens. They are the drama queen of the animal kingdom. And uh, you literally sort of touch them, they go, ah! um, <laughs> which is quite, quite funny, actually, really. Um, but anyway, we just made the most of it and gave them lots of cuddles. Can we do the pink next, please? I love this pink. It is lovely, isn't it? It's sort of raspberry milkshake. Do you know what I mean? It is raspberry, but mixed with milk, full fat milk. Yum. <laughs> Not that I feel like a raspberry milkshake. <gasps> it's lovely, isn't it? Great. Perfect scale. It's not a tiny print. But, you know, you're sashing your cornerstones. It would be a super useful fabric. Yeah. Lovely. And you see what I mean about working so well for something like teens or tweens for like bed quilts. Um, and cushions and pillows. I think it's a lovely range, ever so usable. And then this last one, this glorious burst of energy in this wonderful orangey red. It's delicious. They've called this shade geranium, which I think is perfect. Think of your traditional geranium. It is red, but it's an orange red. Anne's messaged him from South Yorkshire. Morning, Stuart and team. Looking forward to the shows. Loving the fabrics. Me too. And seeing you on Sewing Street. Oh, Anne, thank you so much. It's really sweet. Thank you. It's lovely to be back. It feels like ages. It's only been about a week, but feels like forever. But I've made about three quilts <laughs> in, the, in the past week. So I haven't been slacking. So that's that one. Now then... Last print, this is another sort of big group. There's two more, beg your pardon, beg your pardon. There are, there are, there's two more. This is the big one. So these are lovely, aren't they? That's great. Now, I, I could do a shirt or a blouse 
or a dress in any of these and I think that would look lovely. Let's do this one first. Our web pictures never look the best, do they? You've always got to see the piece of fabric opened out. The colour is glorious, isn't it? My sister used to wear a shade of lipstick, that colour. It was the 80s. And she would wear that, yeah, it was lovely. Quite olivey skinned and that looked beautiful. But yeah, gorgeous. I'm thinking summery tops. Um, and I'm thinking very much spring, summer, especially summery projects. There's so much warmth and vibrancy and energy in these designs, aren't there, and colours. They are rich and beautiful. Love that little bit of green as well in there. It's just so fresh. So there's five colourways in this collection. Next one we'll do. Well, let's do, let's just do them in order. This one again, I think would suit any stash, frankly. It's a really useful one, isn't it? Lovely, warm, buttery cream background. Little floral. Easy to use, easy to use that. Now I've got to tell you, we've less than half of the stock now of our mega bundle. We're down to 40% left of the stock. So you will need to be ever so quick with that one. We'll go with the orange next. And again, this is a lovely kind of peachy orange. It's soft and gentle. Coral. Isn't that pretty? Now that I think would be lovely to make kind of, you know, you know, kind of, baby, um, there's no other word for it, knickers. Do you know what I mean? The little elasticated, yeah, that you put over a nappy. I'm just thinking those matching bib, yeah. <laughs> or a little dungaree dress or dungaree, something like that. Or even just the pockets or trims would be lovely. This would look really well with denim. Like a medium blue denim would look lovely trimmed with this. Ever so cool. I love it. This is a brand new range, by the way, if you've just joined us from Moda called Sincerely Yours. Um, it's brand new. It is so lovely. We're so lucky here at Sewing Street. Well, we're not lucky. We do it deliberately. We, we choose all these gorgeous new fabric ranges to bring to you. There's always something fresh. Oh, something fresh. Bernadette's messaged in. Morning, Stuart. What a fantastic collection from Moda. Loving the hearts. They would make a stunning little girl's dress. Love, Bernadette. Now, is this Bernadette Little Miss Dress Company? I'm wondering. Bernadette is a great friend of mine who has a company making children's clothing. And Bernadette, if it's you, I couldn't agree. Well, if it's not you, I couldn't agree with you more. Perfect, perfect, perfect for little girls dresses and accessories. They're adorable. This is the flamingo colourway. How cute. You know those little bucket hats? I, I did a bucket hat pattern in my very first book, So Fabulous, and it was kind of, you know, multi-size bucket hat just for the summer. I mean, lovely. And you could get probably two or three bucket hats, depending on the size, the smallest size out of half a metre, mixed with just some plain white would look so crisp and fresh. The last colourway is the red and again it's that geranium. This would make a gorgeous adult dress, this colour, wouldn't it? Yes, I'm thinking on a bicycle, Going down the Champs Elysees, ready for a you know a lunchtime coffee or perhaps a little you know a soup son of something French onion soup and a pasty, and I'm not talking Cornish here. <laughs> little trip to a patisserie in the afternoon for a macaron. Mmm, gorgeous, gorgeous. I think that's lovely. I think this is a stunning collection. We've got one more fabric design from this collection, one more print. There's two options. And again, there's a sort of, you know, this one, 
this light background would again go in anybody's stash, I think. Good universal print, lovely warm buttery cream background, and then those little tiny dots, ivory. You've got kind of little magenta, coral, and uh, geranium dots. And basically, if whatever other fabric you bought, some of this would then go with it beautifully. So if I just grab anything at random, so if you'd bought maybe that floral, perfect. If you'd bought these hearts, perfect. It's just easy peasy, works with absolutely every single one of these fabrics beautifully. Brill, 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 brill. And then the very last one in the collection is that same design, but this has got the coral background. Is this the coral or the flamingo? This is the flamingo, isn't it? It's got that flamingo background and then a little white or cream dot. Beautiful. Now remember, we do have a mega bundle as well. Don't forget to check out, by the way, on your half meters. Some of these designs are going very, very quickly. And if you've got a particular favorite or a few favorites, grab them, check them out really quickly, won't you? So you make sure you have them. Now, don't forget, there is a mega bundle of all 19 fabrics. So you get nine and a half meters. You get nine and a half meters. They're not quite as pristine as at the start of the, but this is what fabric looked like in my studio, you see, because I've always had a little fiddle with any bundle of fabrics I get. I'm straight in there opening it out and having a little play. Um, but you're getting 19 half metres, which is nine and a half metres in total. You're only paying for eight, uh, so 17 of those fabrics. You're getting a whole metre for free. Morning, darling. Yes, it is me. Ah, oh, Bernadette. Mwah. Morning to you. I've changed my favourite to the geranium. Such choices. Love, Bernadette. Yep, I know. That's the hard bit, isn't it? Choosing which one you're going to have. Debbie has also messaged in, these would all make beautiful dresses for a little girl with a matching headband and bucket or bucket hat. Totally agree, Debbie. Totally agree. Absolutely lovely. Now that mega bundle now, there are more of these in baskets than we have available. So this really is time to click check out. Remember, you're only going to pay one PMP, $3.95 and that will cover you for the whole day. So don't worry if there's something that you want later on. You can make a second purchase, a third purchase, you won't pay any more PMP. We have got two easy pays, two um, split pays on this of 63, 66, um, if you'd like to spread the cost. Oh, lovely. And remember, that's interest free. Now, we do have a design roll of those designs of Sincerely Yours. This is a pack of 40 um, two and a half inch strips. Now I just want to show you this because there are a few other designs in here that we haven't got by the half meter. For example, I don't know, I'm just going to tilt this slightly. Can you see this crisscross here? I know that I want in every colour under the sun, thank you. We couldn't get all of these, so yeah. So I'm not going to open this because one of you will have this one. Oh, look at that. And is that a big polka dot in there as well, I think? Oh, yummy. So you're getting a few extra prints in there. The whole thing is delicious. Oh, and that same design in the purple. Oh, why didn't we have that in half meters? I'll say it. That's delicious. I just want that on a stick. It's like a lollipop, isn't it? Yummy. Gorgeous, forty-seven ninety-nine. It's brand new. Moda, sincerely yours. Sincerely mine. Thank you. <laughs> it's not mine until I check out, is it? And I have to wait till after the show. So get in there quick. Literally, grab it from my hands, <laughs> my grasping hands. <laughs> Fabulous. Love it. Yes. Let's do. Let's do, now I really hope Charlie's watching now. I did text Charlie earlier on, but he was in the land of Nod. Um, this is so cute. 
If you want to go all out, Valentine, and why not? This is hugs and kisses. Oh look, we did Henry Glass Christmas, didn't we, with the gnomes? I wonder if they're going to pop up all year round. Autumn gnomes. Gnomes with pumpkins, who knows? These are very cute, love these. Love the little gnome's noses. Look at those. <laughs> if you buy multiples of these, by the way, they will all be cut separate, so um, they won't come joined. Adorable, 9.99. Margaret's already bought this and done a FIFO review, which I'd just like to share with you. Love 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 this panel it is gorgeous isn't it margaret i love it you got in early 26 days ago gorgeous yeah some things did go onto the website early i think it's lovely you've got lots here you've got the kind of hugs and kisses across the top and the the little kisses and hugs xo kisses and hugs love that so cute have to use that as well in something but you know, you might actually just use this part to make a pillow or a cushion. You know, you could use the gnomes for something else. You could actually um, bond a web on the back, cut the whole of the gnomes out, applique this onto a different background, you know, and create a, a larger panel for a quilt. And then these down here, again, you could piece these together. So don't be afraid to cut up your panel. Hello. Hugs and kisses. Really cute. Love that. It's $9.99 for the panel on its own. Now, we also have fabrics available by the half metre. I'm going to run through these. Now let's start off, there's a few kind of feature prints. Very limited these, very limited. You'll see why when I open it out, because if you wanted to make lots of Valentine cards, for example, you might be kind of do a bit of mixed, mixed media card maker that it likes to use a bit of fabric. These are perfect, aren't they, to cut out? What about fabric postcards? I mean, gosh, I'm all about sharing love all year round. But if you feel like, you know, just now, you know people that need a little message of love, a little hug or a kiss, send them a little fabric postcard. They're adorable, aren't they? Lots of different design elements here. You could, of course, use this fabric just as it is, layer it, maybe quilt around the outside of each little panel. Or you could cut them up, rearrange, you could use them within your piecing, you know, something like that, done as the centre of a star block. And if you're ever unsure about, you know, kind of like the size or the size is a bit suspect, you know, put a bit of red or a bit of pink or something around the outside solid, bigger than you need the square to end up, and then square it up, trim it down. I do that with panels all the time. They're often not printed as perfect squares anyway, because, of course, fabric moves. So that's been very, very popular though. There's very little of this one left. So if you want a bit of that, into the basket, check out as quick as you can. Now there's another one which I think is equally useful from the point of view of fussy cutting or, and I love a border print because border prints again offer so many possibilities. The print on the website, the picture on the website rather, makes this print look very small but you can see the actual proper size. Now I've just put it this way because I want to show you that it's printed in vertical strips. Okay, so the selvage either side. So if you were to buy a meter of this, you're going to get a longer panel, which is super useful if you're using this to border a quilt. Let me turn it side on now so you can see the designs. They're adorable, aren't they? Love this. Look at all the little gnomes noses. They're so cute. <laughs> adorable and again you could bond a web along the back I'd put like a little strip there 
and a little strip of bond web there, but nothing in the middle. And then use some embroidery scissors, you know, to cut out. Peel the bond web top and bottom, and then fuse that onto wider fabric. And then, um, you know, applique around the edge stitch. But you don't need bond web down the middle. It's just a waste of bond web, isn't it? That center doesn't need bond web. It's only the outside edges. So just rotary cut, maybe like an inch, inch and a half wide strip for top and bottom. You could also use this to make a lovely, if you mitered this, so cut out, say, four repeats of the same part of the design, use them for your four borders around a cushion, and then mitre the corners. Beautiful. Let me grab the next fabric. Let's go. Now, this is a good all over print, this one. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm quite romantic all year round. I like sort of, you know, flowers and lovely dinners and things like that. But it is, I'm just dropping hints now. But I do like a special effort on Valentine's Day. <laughs> I've already bought a card. Very limited though, this one. Happy Valentine Day. Cute. Could just make a little pillow, couldn't you, or a cushion. Ever so sweet. Gnomes coming out of envelopes, holding envelopes. They're not coming out. I have none of that. Oh, they're cute. That's sweet. Again, I'm thinking pyjama bottoms would be very sweet in this, and a little pyjama top. Or a pyjama case, like a drawstring bag. Be ever so pretty. Some, I, sometimes I remember how to do the channel at the top of a drawstring bag, the clever channel, you know, and sometimes I, mostly I forget. So mostly when I want to do a drawstring, I just do like a, an extra strip of fabric that I fold in top and bottom and at the edges and then stitch that on top of the bag front and back with the open ends that I can thread cord through. It works. It does the job. Can I show this one next? I think this would be a really good one just for general use. Um, I think that's really lovely. This would be really nice as a lining for a tweed bag, wouldn't it? I think that's gorgeous. And it's a plaid, but done on the bias. So if you cut straight of grain strips for binding, you have the effect of bias plaid for binding. Lovely. More people wanting that than we've actually got fabric, so it's lovely, isn't it, that one? Really nice. Right, a few more to go through. I'll go through them quite quickly. There's an all-over print of gnomes having a cuddle. <laughs> I was slightly judgmental in my tone then, wasn't I? A little bit. Ever so cute, though. Susan, lovely Stuart. <laughs> Sue again. I have the gnome panel on its way. Could I just ask if you'll be selling the instructions for your fab cushion behind you? Susan, I'm going to give them to you for free. I don't want any money for it at all. Um, 10 o'clock, I'll go through how to make that cushion. And thank you for saying it's fab. It's very quick, very easy. And it would also make a lovely quilt, wouldn't it? You could make it that size for a baby quilt, for example, minus pom-poms. But yeah, um, 10 o'clock, I'll give you the instructions for free, my love. Happy Valentine's Day, unashamedly romantic, pink, gorgeous little hearts. Fabulous. Love that. Couple more. Are you feeling the love? No. <laughs> Well, I am. I'm feeling lots of love this morning. And thank you, actually, everyone who's messaged in and uh, saying good morning, because um, it is wonderful to hear from you and to know that you're watching. This is a pretty print. Love that. And again, you know, I mean, yes, it's, it's, it's lots and lots of hearts, hugs and kisses. But I mean, if you were making a quilt or a cushion or a bag for your niece or nephew, 
or your granddaughter or grandson? What about a little mug cosy? It'd be lovely. Yeah, or little coasters or wheaty bags. Wheaty bags or, you know, like a heart shaped cushion. I know I was talking to a friend of mine um, who has um, recently had breast cancer treatment and she benefited from, there's a group isn't it, I think they, they collect them, they're like hearts that women who've had breast cancer surgery can tuck under their arm to support and cushion themselves and she benefited from using one so she's been making loads as a thank you back you know for for the benefit she got um i think these would be lovely wouldn't they because they're just saying here's a bit of love here's a kiss um for you as well so super just gorgeous isn't it the things that people do to to support and help other people is just glorious um this has got to be my favorite print kind of winged gnomes if cupid were made a gnome this is what cupid would look like gorgeous <laughs> Now, do you remember the Moda Sincerely Yours mega bundle? Well, <clears throat> serious talk now. Um, you need to check out. Let me just tell you, there are uh, four times as many of you with this in your basket than we have stock. Four times as many of you. Um, I don't want any of you to miss out, but lots of you will, but certainly don't let that person be you. If you check out your basket now, you'll be able to get that gorgeous mega bundle. And it is amazing. You've got 19 half meters of fabric here in prints and colors that will take you right through the summer. It'll be glorious sunshine and flowers all the way. It's just such an energetic collection, this. The colours in it are so gorgeously vibrant, but not garish. The heart print is my absolute favourite. Lovely. Isn't that a bundle of fabric? <laughs> Look at that. Now, if you wanted to extend this and you wanted to add a solid, easy, easy, I'd go ecru, I'd go um, natural, I'd go peach or bright pink. Any of those would work well. Be quick on that, won't you? Be quick on that. One quick question before we go to break. Hi Stuart, love the cushion behind you. What is the fabric please from Rian in Conwy? Okay, it's on pre-order. Are we able just to jump to the website and show the bundle? Let me show you the bundle. Um, I saw it on, I had it on air just a week or so ago and I just loved it. This is the Watch Live page and we'll just scroll through. If you go to pre-order and then scroll down, we didn't get a chance, but there it is. Rose Terrace Fat Quarter. <gasps> As soon as I saw them, I just fell in love. You've got 14 fat quarters in that bundle. Now, let me tell you, I cut one four and a half inch strip across a fat quarter of each of the 14 fabrics to make this. This is 24 inches by 32 inches. At 10 o'clock, I will go through everything you need to make that cushion. But coming up right after the break is the Cozy Up Quilt, which is right behind me. It's with Wendy Orlando. She is so much fun. I love her. I will see you and her after the break. We are moving home. From Wednesday the 26th of January, Sewing Street and Yarn Lane are moving to Freeview Channel 73. We will still be on Sky Channel 670, YouTube and Facebook Live as normal. It's only the Freeview Channel that is changing. Keep your eyes peeled on our Facebook, Instagram and our email newsletter for more details. 
And if you watch us on Freeview, don't forget to tune into Freeview Channel 73 from 8am on Wednesday the 26th of January. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Do you love sewing? Are you creative, inspiring, and love to share your skills and tips with others? We're excited to announce Sewing Street's Search for a Star 2022. We're looking for talented sewists of all genres. Dressmaking, quilting, homewares, and needlecraft. To join the Sewing Street family and share their sewing wisdom with our viewers. Live on air. To enter to become our next guest designer, all you have to do is send us a video submission of you introducing yourself and a brief demonstration of some sewing. Send your video to studio at sewingstreet.com with the subject, search for a sewing star. If you have any issues, email us and Director Elliot will be sure to help. Please keep your videos under three minutes in length and in landscape. For more information, Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Good, Good luck. luck! We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7 full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando, and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Hi everybody, welcome back. And if you're just joining us, welcome. It is Wednesday here on Sewing Street and we are so glad to have your company. Now, we've got a fabulous hour. I know I shouldn't have favorites and everybody's my favorite really, but I do love my hours with Wendy Orlando because she's such a firecracker. Look at her, everything she does, she's jigging her hips and smiling. Just the energy, Wendy, that you bring to the studio every time you come is fabulous. Aww. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs> um, there's Wendy. We have got a most gorgeous quilt design from Wendy. It's called Cozy Nights In, um, which I love. This is lovely, isn't it? 
beautifully beginner friendly. It's a great size as well, a good lap quilt. And it's a brand new collection from Moda. I'm going to be showing you four different colorways that you can make that quilt in. It's just gorgeous. Now, let's start with the colourway that Wendy has made her finished quilt in that's on the wall. And it's a kind of collection of lovely teal greens uh, with a little bit of lovely warm orange and gold and rust mixed in as well. Now, the price on these bundles is amazing, 59 99 And for that, you're getting all of your fabrics. You get four metres of this brand new collection of fabric, plus Wendy's instructions. The instructions are brill. Here's the quilt design super detailed crafty co that is wendy super detailed instructions all your layout how to make your elements absolutely brill my goodness you've packed a lot into that pattern oh i have it's brill it's brill absolutely i love it that is really good so you've got your pattern and then check out these fabrics i love that super sized gingham that is so cool this is beautiful Got, they're a bit retro, aren't they? Love anything with words on it. This is all different kinds of tree. Aspirin, aspen, hickory, ash, beech, walnut, sourwood. Love those little acorns. That's beautiful. And you're getting half a meter of each of these fabrics. And then you've got this, um, is this a cream? Ivory, and you get a whole meter of that. So you're getting six half meters of fabric from the main collection a meter of the solid as well so four meters in total plus that brilliant pattern now size wise this quilt wendy is 44 and a half inches by 55 and a half inches so fantastic single bed topper Brilliant lap quilt size, brilliant as a sofa throw. But I've got to be honest with you, when Wendy got the quilt out and put it down on the ground, I instantly said, oh, let's have a picnic. Because I think picnic quilt, Wendy, picnics. Absolutely. I thought it was going to say, let's have a snuggle. Let's have a snuggle. <laughs> Sincerely yours. Yeah. Uh, well, no, that's perfect for a picnic. It really perfect. is. And that oversized gingham just says picnic to me. Ready most placemats. <laughs> You're not kidding. Actually, with a bit of, you know, one block with a strip of plain down the side, a little pocket for your napkin. Yep. Perfect. Definitely. Well, that's a quilt block I'd use again and again. I love it. So this is the teal colourway. I'm going to whiz through these um, kits as quickly as I can to give Wendy maximum time for her demos. Do need to show you these lovely fabrics. They're so lovely. This is the sage colourway. Now, these... I can't decide on a favourite, but these are lovely. Now, I want to show you all the different fabrics because our pictures on the website really don't go into, into the sort of detail that we can here. And I want you to see each fabric you're getting. So this is lovely because it's somewhere, the background colour is almost, I would call it wasabi. It's that kind of slightly greenish gold. Do you know what I mean? I like specific. Pistachio, <laughs> yes, pistachio, that's a better, that's better actually. That's lovely, that is lovely. These are beautiful fabrics, aren't they? Oh, now that one I want 10 metres of, please. That's brilliant. Look at that, look at that. I just love that. I love that. Lovely message from Jan. What gorgeous colour bundles. I'd buy one of each if I could. Must sew my stash first. Jan, I know. So faster, so faster. And then you're getting that metre of ivory as well. Now, Wendy's done a little um, version, a mini version, just to show you how that colourway looks sewn up. Isn't that beautiful? Get your instructions as well, of course. That is fresh, isn't it? Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Freshen up the conservatory. I'm also thinking if you're doing a refresh for the caravan. Ooh. Yes, a quilt or some cushions, something like that. I mean, of course, you've got the instructions to make Wendy's Cozy Nights in quilt. But if you preferred, you could turn these fabrics into whatever you want. Could be a cushion. I mean, I'd still use that block because the block's gorgeous, isn't it? But placemats, table runner, cushions, small wall hanging. 
you know, I'm sure, Wendy, you would support that. Oh, my goodness, I just thought, yes, if you made the square and then added a bit on at the side, then you could. You could make little slots to put your knife, fork and spoon, couldn't mm. you? So, yes, mm. definitely. definitely. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. It's good to see the little sample, isn't it, how those colours look made up. That's the sage colourway, what you're seeing on screen now. That's sage. Now, the next one we're calling orange for obvious reasons. Could be my favourite. You know how I feel about orange. Same set of instructions. Look at these. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. These are gorgeous. Love that. This is really beautiful, actually, isn't it? This is absolutely beautiful. Are you an orange gold girl? My favourite. Yeah, that is, me yeah. too. Oh, that's yummy. Look at that. Oh, and that's a pretty print. Look at that. That is really lovely. And again, a metre of ivory. Oh, these are stunning. They're a bit different as well, aren't they? I think because of the scale of the prints. And also as well, there's quite a decent amount of background. So you've got slightly more of a kind of tossed florals. I really, really like that colourway. Yeah, warm summer evenings. Little bit of barbecue glowing in the background. Sheena's in Somerset. Morning. Great to see you both back on the show. Fab quilt, Wendy, and gorgeous fabrics. Yeah, I know. I mean, round of applause to Wendy. That quilt is gorgeous. Yeah, good clap in there. Good little mini baby clap. Yeah. No, I love it. Love it. Really lovely. And then there's the there's the there's the fourth colourway. Which is, <laughs> I haven't got the bundle <laughs> in front of me. It's on its way up. I promise I'll show it you if it arrives in time. But what Wendy has got is, okay, this is now my new favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy's done a start. Look at those. Hello. So what you're getting there is, again, you're getting those um, six half metres of fabric. So that will be one two three four five six yeah we've got all six fabrics there haven't we brilliant oh, wendy thought this through um and your meter of ivory now this one is a different price to the others but we're going to drop that price down because i tell you what actually all of the bundles were 61.91 they should be this price all of them had a little price crash on them and we don't usually sort of make a big song and dance out of the fact we, I mean, sometimes we do obviously drop the price on the screen and we tell you it's a saving, but pretty much all the time we reduce the price in some way, you know, just to bring it, usually to bring it to a nice sort of round number, really. Um, and that's what we'd already done on the other bundles. But this one, for some reason, hadn't been loaded onto the system and hadn't been delivered. Um, but that gave us a good opportunity just to show you what we do. And we've got the bundle. This was a bit like Challenge Annika, wasn't it? Someone just, the helicopter just landed. <laughs> Here's Annika Rice, here she is. Come on. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Thank you, my darling. That's Look at this, hot off the press. I shall have to take everything out of plastic bags. But it's a good opportunity for me to show you the prints now, isn't it? Look, come on round here, you. Come and have a look at this. This is lovely because this is a lovely kind of charcoal-y background. Oh, yum, yum, yum. These are lush. Look at those. This is the one that Wendy's going to be demoing with as well. Oh, that is stunning because actually it's a charcoal, but it's, it's not a brown charcoal, but it's sort of almost... It's a really soft charcoal. Um, I'm already craving a pumpkin spiced latte now. I've never actually tried one, but it sounds nice. <laughs> and a metre of ivory to go with. How lovely is that? More clapping. More clapping. So, okay, so those are the four main bundles, all right? 
and each one of them you're getting four meters of fabric in total three meters in total six half meters of the collection and then a meter of your solid ivory solid plus your pattern really good pattern that if you'd like to see any of the bundles again you know, I will do a round up at the end. But if you want me to whiz through a bundle at all, just message the studio and say, could you just show the teal, sage, orange, or black? Grey. Grey. Teal, sage, orange, or grey. Okay, pattern on its own is available. Love a Wendy pattern. Love a Crafty Co pattern. You can get the pattern on its own. It's 9 99 for the pattern. Really detailed, really detailed. You really have packed a lot into that, Wendy. That's superb. I've got a question, Wendy, for you. We have a question. Hi, Stuart. What are the words on the text fabric? I can't read them, thanks. I think they're trees. They are, aren't but they? But I've never heard of a pin oak. Well, a pin oak, so I've heard of an oak. Yeah. But hickory? Yeah, hickory is okay, a wood, cool. yeah. Uh, sweet gum? Because you get like hickory smoked things, uh, don't you? And that's so they're hickory all trees. Wood. Yeah, they are. They're all trees. Yes. So but I didn't know you could get a hackberry. Pine balsam, mm. red oak, sugar maple, aspen, locust, cherry, fir, mm. magnolia, pecan. Very American trees, aren't they? They sound straight from New England. Oh, a sugar maple. Those are beautiful aspens. And on one of the kits, it's uh, like rainbow colours. Yes, I really love that, that one. I can't remember what kit that it's was. It's in called. the um, sage. Right. It's in the sage bundle. That's that lovely fresh sort mm -hmm. of almost, I would call it apple green really. But yes, they are. Look at these. Let me just show you ever so quickly. Aren't they lovely? Sage, that bundle is the most popular at the moment, but isn't that beautiful? I love that. I want to make pencil cases out of that. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know why. I've but got I loads of pencils. Do. I could make loads. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it look lovely in the. That's the sage colourway. That's the most popular at the moment. Gorgeous. Um, Wendy, it's over to you. It's been too long. It's felt like ages I know. since we've had you I in know. the studio. I know. I took Christmas off. And, but it just seems like forever ago. You so were I'm missed. <laughs> there was a lot, though, honestly, lots of you got in touch to ask where Wendy was and if Wendy was all right. Wendy, you were just having a little extended break, yes, weren't you? Yes, I was. Yes, I was just playing catch up because I had quite a busy year last year. So it was really lovely. Spent Christmas with the family. Just did absolutely nothing. Uh, oh, well, I don't think so, Wendy. You've been making gorgeous quilts for one thing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I... I think I can actually now call myself a bit of a quilt maker. You are a quilter. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And this is, I'm so excited. This was every part of it made on my machine. Fab. I quilted it on my machine. Fab. So excited. Is that the first time you've quilted a quilt on your machine? Uh, that because it's quite it's it's a nice size. So I've done size. little tiny lap quilts, but that's the first size, mm -hmm. uh, first time that I've done one that size. And that's the teal colourway. If you yes, say so, yes. Teal. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this one, and this is thanks to you, but I did learn something that I won't let your secret out today, what you told me this morning. Okay. This is the quilt as you go. Yes. Yes. So I am now absolutely hooked. Oh, really? You've yes. never tried it before? Never tried it before. Okay, because we talked about quarters you go, didn't we, last yes. time you were in? Well, you told me I had to do it, so I did <laughs> it. <laughs> um, the only thing is, if you do do quilt as you go, you, it's probably not advisable to try and squeeze the little cornerstones in because they're going to be in there. Yeah. Um, but you can see on the back, and I've just used um, a plane on the back, you can see my quilting. Mm. God damn, that one looks a bit dark there. I think it I looks could, ace. It, um, yes. Oh, that's all. Oh, that's sorry. That's a bugbear of yours. Don't a little worry. bit of a. No. Um, <laughs> so that was that a quilt as you go. That looks and really that lovely. That technique is amazing. The only difference is if you do it that way, then you get the smaller sashing. Yeah, slightly that's, narrower sashing. But yeah. that's brilliant. I wanted to show the colourways um, and you'll see the quilt behind me here. And I've done this. This is uh, when I do something. I always there is a reason for doing it. Mm. I put the fabrics, the darker, the, the same tonal fabrics together mm -hmm. on this square here. Yes. Which means it creates a circle. Yes. And then on here, I've done the fabrics to create the cross. 
it's so it looks lovely. a bit like noughts and crosses, that one. It's a really lovely way of using the fabrics. I love that. And I've noticed you've done that. It yeah. looks like two completely different blocks. So this looks, they, exactly. And, mm. and that's what I, when I create something, um, I like to have it multifunctional because that's just me. I just like you to be able to use it different ways. So you'll see in my court make, in all my blocks, I make one block, but it's what you do with the block and the fabric that make it different. So the teal version that's hanging up on the wall now is being super popular already a third of the stock has gone of that one that's the teal but just to contrast the way that Wendy's used the fabric remember you're getting the same sort of selection of fabrics in each bundle but with the sage version which is the smaller version that she's done just show I'll just show you that and the way that you've used the fabrics there it looks completely different so what I've done I've made sure that I alternated so I've got that fabric the, the, the colourway of that fabric, then a completely different colourway, and then the cross is the same tone. And again, on this one here, these two are the same tone, and this one is completely different. So it's all about the contrast, it is. isn't it, and how you use it? And that's with my, with, with my block making. I like to have a block that you can either twist to change the pattern. Mm -hmm. This one you can't because it's completely symmetrical or you can change where you place the fabric to make it look different. Yeah. So, But I wanted to show, because I thought this one would show much better on the wall, where you've got the two different blocks. It's really clever, really clever. And I've also, I've, I've just drawn out some little pictures, well, I haven't drawn them out, I've just printed off the pictures of the four different colourways. Yes. Sorry, I don't know if you can get all those in. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. definitely. That is perfect, thank yeah. you. So that shows, because on, on the instructions, the instructions are all the same, so they're all the same colourway, the mm -hmm. one that I made the quilt in. But this is just to, to show you what they would look like. And when I was choosing the colours, I've got like a theme of a spring, summer, autumn and winter. Gotcha. So this one's my autumn because it's the nice oranges and brown tones. So that's what and we've called we've grey. That has that, that mixture of charcoal, grey and orange in it. That's the bottom that's left. That's that one. Perfect. And then this one is a cooler version, so this is my winter. And that's the teal, isn't it? That's the one that's hanging up behind Wendy with those gorgeous deep teal greens. And then you've got the spring where everything's all bursting and fresh and green. And, and then that's got... the sage. Oh, you're very good So if today. you're looking for that on the website or ordering that, that's sage. And then so that's this one, this one's coming up. So this is the sage one that you can see on screen. Okay, yeah, if you have a look on the second image on, on each of them um, on the website, you'll see the bundle of fabrics that you get. Sorry, Wendy. Go on. And then that one's summer because it's citrusy and it bursts and it's all bright. It is gorgeous. That's the orange <laughs> bundle that we've got. So you can, you can take Wendy's sort of same theme there and choose whether you're going to do spring, summer, autumn or winter. But each quilt glorious. I love them and um, with these two I'm just showing you the difference if you were to do the one on the wall is, um, is which one is it? I don't, so I've changed the fabrics around I and it's given it is it's I've changed them around and it's given a completely different look. The only thing that I would advise same, that's the same colourway. That's the same colourway. Sorry the same colourway but they look completely you different. Quick, Wendy. Sorry oh I you am today to I'm that. rearing I'm rearing. That, so that is the teal colourway and because I've put the check on the outside there and on the internals there, it's created a completely different look. It hasn't totally it? does. It totally transforms the look. It's hard to believe actually mm. that it's exactly the same colourway, just how you use it and where you place the more orangey tones. Again, uh, because brilliant. I've used those two that are pretty similar tones, then you've got the cross and the circle and the cross and the circle. Whereas this one, you can definitely see the crosses in all of them. Yeah. So really cool. I'm so excited to see the colourways that people are going to choose for this. Well, me too. I love that. I love that. Wendy, will you show us how we get started? Absolutely. The first thing to do <laughs> is do what I've done here. And you can tell our morning this morning. This is a representation of our morning this morning. It's been a little <laughs> bit chaotic, but it's really good fun. Um, I put everything in bags. Now, I reuse these bags time and time and time again. So I put a little bit of sticky tape over the top just to protect my letters. And then I cut everything out and I put them in their bags with all their letters on. That, and does that reference the same sort of stages in your and yes. the same colours? Yes. So the, well, the first, the very, very first thing you need to do when you get this is read the pattern all the way through. Even if you if you follow my pattern, so you know roughly how I work, it's always worth just sitting, having a cup of tea or coffee, and read the instructions all the way through because I might have snuck something in a bit yeah. different to what I normally do. I think you're right, and I just wanted to show you on the pattern actually where Wendy's labelled each of those bags, um, and then if you have a look on the pattern itself it shows you 
really, really clearly those letters and their placement, which just makes things so much easier, Wendy. What I've done this time is what I normally do is I'm very lucky to be able to have the software to load the fabrics in so that you can see the colourways. This one I purposely didn't. I made mm. sure that it was completely neutral, so mm. no fabrics were mm. used, just colours. Mm. Um, because then if you go on and make it again yourself, then you, you know how the structure of it works. Um, so that's the first thing to do, is to choose the colours where they want to go. So before you make do any cutting out, choose the colours, put them against each other just to see which ones you like. Mm -hmm. And then, so I've cut everything out apart from this one. Now this was the one that I felt was really important. I've cut out some of them, but I just want to, oh, excuse me. See, I didn't get myself very organised this morning, did I? So this is the wording. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you see on here, I've got the words on this one and they're all going in the same direction. Now, when you cut a half square triangle in half, you're going to have opposite sides. So we just need to do something a little bit different with any directional fabric. Um, there's a couple of other tips that I would say. Don't use the check on the cross. The only reason that is if you don't get the lines completely straight, yes. it will really stand out. Yes. So I would use, as I have here, I would use the check in one of the half square triangles. So because I say, if you don't get it absolutely spot on here, your eye's going to home straight in on You're it, isn't it? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely yeah. right. That sage colourway that's on screen now is glorious. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's mm. absolutely gorgeous. Because it's green, but it's got, it's got a good dose of sunshine. Mm. It has, hasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, so that's what I was to just say. I mean, again, it's entirely up to you where you put it on here. But just by having those checks, it's more noticeable if some of them are a little bit off. It's a top tip. It is. And it's a top tip because it just goes to show you the way where you use a fabric can be success or, or failure, can't it? Absolutely. And, and it's got nothing to do with skill or whatever, but it's just about, you know, mm -hmm. choosing the position. And it does work best with non-directional fabric lacrosse because it's made up of one long section and two shorter sections. Mm -hmm. And if you cut them, I, I cut them on the width of fabric, which means you're cutting all the way along so those ones are going to be turned round. So the cross does work best with non-directional. Got you. But well, apart just from that, to just a go quick with query, it. And I wonder if the gallery can just help me here. Carol's message in to say, good morning. I have tried Channel 73. Ooh. It's a TV drama. <laughs> well, uh, it is. we've got plenty of drama here. <laughs> That's what we say, isn't it? Sewing Street, the home of drama. <laughs> what time will the channel be changing over? Uh, different regions change over at different times. If you can't get us on 73, um, watch us online for now, mm. if you can. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, we don't know when the changeover happens exactly everywhere. Some people it changes, some regions it changes sooner than others. If you can get hold of us one way or another, we're happy. We're ha you're happy too. Um, also, uh, Wendy, a lovely message from Karen who said, Good morning, Stuart Wendy. I'm loving this quilt, particularly the grey option, which I've got in front of me. The prints have taken me straight back to the 70s mm -hmm. and my Aunt Susan's kitchen. Thank you for evoking that lovely memory for me. And me. And really? me. Yeah, yeah, I had an aunt that had, uh, it was the floral one. So if you're thinking of the same one as I am, in the 70s she had floral curtains. Oh. So that took me right back yeah, there. It's um, lovely. And when I chose the colours, I wanted to make sure that I had different in each of them so each of the quilts look different. Mm. Um, I just want to show you though I've got in the instructions I tell you to cut on the width of fabric. Now I advise that you cut those out first because then you know you're going to have enough fabric. You are going to have more than enough. You have enough left over and what I've done on this quilt here I've made a scrappy binding. So I've cut uh, strips of fabric, joined them together and it, you can't really see it on the screen but they're all different all the way round. Um, so cut those, out for, cut those out first and then the cross is in the middle because um, they are the same length mm -hmm. as the squares then you'll be able to cut those out as well oh, on perfect. some of them. So um, then you, you just get a little bit more fabric left you, over. You see your fabric. I've got my favourite out. That was the first thing I run to when I came this morning was to grab 
The stripology. <laughs> it's out of stock at the moment, but yeah, it's one of our favourites. The square is in stock, though, if you want a stripology, we've got the square in stock. That's actually in a show later on, isn't it, today? Um, I... Uh, use mine for so much more mm. than strips but mm. I'm going to be cutting now when when I when again when I do patterns I don't want to faff around with eights and things like that so I have given you a little bit more than you need on your half square triangle so you need to cut it um, on the quarter now don't be scared if you need to do this because with this I'm just going to square the edge off and this is pretty square but I would always advise if you've got the fabric laying around just to square it off before you start not too bad there I'm going to square that off and then because I want a quarter I'm just going to move it a quarter to the right and I'm now on the dotted line the quarter dotted line and then I need five and a quarter so I'm going to cut it on the five and because I've gone a quarter of an inch over from the zero I've now got five and a quarter clever so it's it's not just for cutting strips um, the only thing that I will say with your stripologies if you are cutting anything other than a half and a whole you will need to move the ruler each yeah. time because normally you can just you know cut 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 but yes. not with anything that's not a quarter you've kept this pattern pretty simple though for us which is oh, great oh yes um, Julie says Wendy is just a star demonstrator oh. she certainly is the quilts so doable I could watch it all oh. day well actually you're in luck today because we've got three hours with Wendy <laughs> yes so we've got Wendy this hour we've also got you 11 and you 12 have. over on Yarn Lane you have we? yes um you have I was just going to ask I need the little mini stripology okay I oh no I, you got it there yes I've got it thank Fabulous. you very much I was just getting ahead with myself usually then. fairly well appointed Wendy well, well normally you know what I'm like I like to be really organized when I come in in this morning but we were thrown a little bit this morning yeah, so I'm yeah. a little bit up in the air today don't you worry now <laughs> why might you use the mini why have you gone to the mini because I love it um because when I've sewn these together I'm then going to be trimming them okay, to size okay. um, with half square triangles I do a big sharp intake of breath when they say and just sew them together because I like to trim them down because I sure, like every fine. single one of mine to be perfect so you make yours a little bigger and then a little trim bit them bigger back. and trim them down so not everyone does but I made four the other day and all were different sizes <laughs> okay fair enough. I can relate we, well, I we can, can relate, can't we? Yeah. now if you're using directional fabric it does state in the instructions how many to make of each but I'm just showing you a couple if you have them the same way, so we've got them the right way up, yep. and you turn them over, and then you're going to draw, because we're only drawing a line because we're creating half square triangles. Okay. So I'm going to draw it from bottom left to top right. Now try and get this as accurate as you can. There is a little bit of wiggle room because I have given you a little bit more fabric than needed. So I've got my line, that doesn't look very dark, does it? Let me... Let me press a bit harder. This has had so much use, this one, that's better. <laughs> there we go. So I'm drawing my line from bottom left to top right. So on the other one, I'm now going to draw it from top left to bottom right. So I'm, I'm kind of creating a flying geese effect. It looks here, a bit it? like that, doesn't it? it? Does so this bit. is, uh, you only need to this do this when you're using directional. directional. Now I have stated to do it with all the fabrics just in case someone hasn't realized that one of them's directional so the pattern will state that that you make x amount of these and draw the line that way and x amount and draw the line because that if way. we're using a non-directional fabric it doesn't matter if we do it, it that way does it we'll no, still it get half square triangles absolutely doesn't but if you want if you've got directional fabric make sure the fabrics are the same way up that's really important turn them over and then draw one that way and then one that way and then um, what am I needing I'm just having a look at you mm -hmm. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm seeing the one that goes with oh, this because yeah, sure. yes. you've taken them haven't you I have <laughs> I've taken them and I'd like to take them home actually they're lovely so you know, what you, you mean is you'd like me to finish ways. the quilt for you then yes, you can take it home that's yes. what you mean isn't that's it? that's what I really mean <laughs> That's the details on screen are for that grey version. I've got a couple of the blocks in front of me. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's so lovely. It's so lovely. Don't they look great? Do you know, my other one, my, the orange was my favourite, but now I've seen that, that really takes me it's back to the really, 70s, Yes, that it one. does. Yeah, this print here. Mm. But you see, what, what um, the half square triangle method, the one up and one down, this means here you've got all four half square triangles made with that, haven't you? And all of the words are going in the same direction. It's a top tip. 
whether you're using a fabric like that or just you know any kind of stripe anything that's directional and if you are a little bit unsure just offer the square before you draw a line just mm -hmm. off put the square on the square and fold it back to see what you're going to get yep so before doing any sewing if you have got a, a fabric that you think oh i'd like that bit to be there or that bit to be there yes just do that yep. and then you know where to draw your line yes um so i'm going to now my lines are drawn don't really need to worry because this is non-directional mm -hmm. so now i'm going to place right sides together now i i'm not a great pinner but if you are new to quilting and the reason i've designed this one is because this is easy enough for a confidence sewer yeah someone that's at home with their machine um, would be able to do this easily for sure right and then i'm just going to pin those together and then what i'm going to do i'm going to sew a quarter of an inch away from the line down that way and turn it round and sew a quarter of an inch down that way but i am going to be chain piecing these together so i'm going to put this one through the machine not take it out and then carry on and that just saves your thread saves time mm, mm. do you know when i made this I made all of them. So I had, it reminded me of Mary Poppins, I had the longest kite tail of chain <laughs> yes. piecing. Um, I always say I'm making bunting. <laughs> <laughs> if you do do that, when you come back the other way, just make sure it hasn't flipped over, but there will be no line to sew off, so you know it's You'd the wrong way. You'd soon see it, yes. you? So I'm not putting on a quarter of an inch um, because uh, I'm using, uh, sorry, I'm putting it at a quarter of an inch because I'm using my central line mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be sewing a quarter of an inch away from that i've got it set at a two yep because it's a nice small stitch and then when i trim the, them down to half square triangles it's small enough so that it's not going to come undone oh 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 he's on a roll this morning isn't he goodness yeah, me going. and then i'm going to go back the other way and they're still at or they're not sewing if they don't want to. <laughs> if it wants to play ball like that today, it can. <laughs> oh, it's not sewing? It's not sewing. Oh. And it's playing silly people today. Oh. Well, I'll recap the bundles Thank while you, you rethread your machine. <laughs> oh, I can't bear being watched thread a machine. I'm terrible. Oh, my I... eyesight is not good now for it, but I need mm. the needle threader. I think right. I've got a needle threader. Bundle-wise, on screen we've got the grey, which is what Wendy is working with. That's these gorgeous colours here. It's a lovely soft grey third of the stock of that has now been checked out so if you want the grey that's those beautiful orange and grey shades love it 59.99 and remember you're getting four meters of fabric three meters of the prints and a one meter of the ivory plus wendy's instructions enough to make the quilt enough to bind the quilt as well and the quilt itself is 44 and a half by 55 and a half so fab size so that's the grey and I've got that bundle right here. The teal version that's on the wall is still in the lead. Now I'll show you those fabrics. You've got your ivory and then you've got this gorgeous selection of golden and teal fabrics. Love that script. More than half of this stock has now been checked out. Now, if you go to more details on the website on any of these, the second image has a breakdown of the fabric. So if you just scroll across from the main image to the second image, you'll get a breakdown of all the fabrics that are included. But that's the teal bundle. Absolutely gorgeous. That does have that lovely sort of, yeah, kitcheny feel or conservatory sort of vibe to it, doesn't it? That's the teal. Now, next up, we've got the orange bundle. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, I've taken that one out of there. Right, sorry. I thought I just mixed up the bundle. That's correct. Right, so here are the fabrics for the orange bundle. Glorious, love that. This has got very much kind of orange and golden yellow vibe, sort of saffron yellow, isn't it? And then you've got that ivory solid, one metre of that, six half metres, plus your instructions as well. That's gloriously summery and warm, kind of saffron and spice colours. 
And then, last of all, we've got the Sage version. Is that machine behaving itself oh, now, it's Wendy? Fine, yeah. Hurrah! Oh, yes. um, this one's got mine and Wendy's favourite printing. That's the script print done in multicolour. Love that one. And then you've got the sort of apple green uh, check. Uh, those lovely florals, a little bit of teal in there as well. Those acorns. And then you've also got your metre of ivory plus Wendy's instructions for 59.99. Let's get back to you, Wendy. Right, so I've changed, I do apologise, I've changed to um, black thread. Okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the nicest on there, so I wouldn't use black thread normally, um, but the machine is, is liking that rather than the other one. It didn't like the other one very much. So I've sewn down either side. Now, you can't, it's a bit hard to see on that one because it's, it's white, but I'm now going to trim the line that I drew. So you can either use a pair of scissors or if you've got your rotary cutter, um, then you get a really crisp edge if you do that. So I've sewn either side of the line and then trimming. So make sure you sew either side, otherwise mm -hmm. you'll have two separate pieces. So what we've done now, and this is the magic, is, and I do your little trick now of, of doing it. Oh, little fingers back massage. Yes, I do, I do. <laughs> I would set the seam first before I do that, but I just wanted to show this fabric, it's so hard, isn't it, on screen to to show the feel of it. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, it's this gorgeous fabric. quality. Moda fabric is always wonderful, and this oh, is no exception. It's beautiful. I'm just going to press the, the squares open. So do you press towards that darker fabric, Wendy? I personally always like to go yeah. to the dark side, only because if you've got a really light fabric, sometimes you can see it peeping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter, and this is why um, this, this one is, is great for those that are new, because you haven't got to join anything, line anything up at this stage. No, there's no points to match Not on at this all. quilt, is Not there, really? You just get your edges together. And that's what I like to do, because we've all done it. We've all, we've all looked at something and thought, yeah, I want to do that, I want to do that. It's been a little bit difficult, and then we've put it in the UFO pot, haven't You're we? And it's kidding. like we don't... Oh, yes, I've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to show you that now... You've got your four fabrics that are all the same way. Brilliant. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't like, to, if you're not worried about directional, it really doesn't matter. Wendy, if I wanted the dark grey, I was the just outside, about to say to you. If I wanted them turned around, are they still going to yes. work? Are they still going to be the right way? Because I was just going to say to you, right, so you've got that and you've gone, oh, that's how I wanted it. And okay. It's like, oh, I'm not sure if I like that. Oh, now. I love that. I do, but it's not. So, oh, wait, oh, I'm going to be devil's advocate. I don't like that arrangement, Wendy. I want it a different way around. Do you know what? I don't like it either. Good. So, Let's <laughs> change it. Then what all you would do is you would change the opposite. Oh, hello. Look at oh, that. Look That's at that. Clever. That's better. That's oh, clever. do you know, I'm not sure if I do. No, I know because I do like this. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so don't worry if you if you think that you've done it on the outside Ace. and then think, I don't like that, you yep. can change it. So it's yep. still going to be directional. That is a top tip that we all need <laughs> to remember. That is, it's a simple one. Simple, simple. But directional fabric, half square triangles, half of them one way, half of them the other way. And that's exactly the same if you're doing flying geese as well. So um, keep that in mind when you're making your flying geese. If in doubt, although they are slightly harder to handle under your sewing machine, you can always cut your fabric into triangles and put them together yeah. if you're ever unsure or for flying geese, mm -hmm. just, just to be sure. So I don't, I, I tend to, this machine is a dream, but my old machine, it just gobbles the ends up. It just right. likes, oh, this is the point there, I'm having that. Okay. Um, but yes, to your point, then, or just cut a piece of fabric, a scrap piece of fabric, and sew it and see how it comes out like. Yeah. Um, because sometimes in our head we think it's going to work, mm -hmm. and then you look at it and think, oh, that's not what I planned. Yeah. I'm now going to use my little baby, my little mini one of these, because so I'm going to do half um, square triangles. Now, I'm not going to lie, I didn't used to like half square triangles right. because they take quite a long time, don't they? With this, oh, yeah. no time at all. Super so, speedy. So I've just noticed Joseph Orlando is watching. Oh, he's not, is he? <laughs> Joseph is. And if he's watching, why are you watching? You should be working. <laughs> Hubby. Joseph's your husband. It's called should Joseph or Joe? If I'm cross with him, <laughs> it's Joseph. How are you feeling right now? 
Joe. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Feeling the love. Morning, Joe. Thanks for watching. What? Sorry, I think I might have just got you in trouble there. Yes, you, ha you have got him in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we're looking for in a in um, a half square triangle, this line down the centre <laughs> is forty five degrees. Yeah, and there is. I a, should hope so too. Well, uh, so should I. <laughs> and this line down here, the um, white dotted line, is forty five degrees. So I'm going to lay it on here, and I'm going to make sure that it peeps out either side of the size that I want. So I want four and a half inch. Yep. So I'm making sure that it goes beyond the zero and the four and a half and it's lined up down here. Ace. So I don't know if these are in stock because this they is... They are. The details are oh, on screen right are, now. This is... Uh, it's changed my life with half-square triangles. I'd square triangles. up half-square triangles with that. Do you that not? Is, do no, you I, do, I, I, make them, I make them right size, you know, and, and fingers crossed. <laughs> Mine never come out no, right I mean, size, I, so you know, I have to I, trim. <laughs> sorry, let me just qualify <laughs> that. When I say that, it sounds like I get it right every time. <laughs> I just make them the right size. I make them the fini to the finished size. <laughs> I don't add the bit extra on for trimming, and sometimes they come out to the right size, and sometimes they don't. I'll be honest with you, mine never come out the same size. So I thought, especially as I say, if, yeah, no, if you good. don't get this right when you're sewing so many pieces together, if you're a millimetre out and you've got ten, you're a, you're a whole you are. centimetre out. You are. So this way, when I trim them down, every single for one's sure. the same. So for I've, sure. I've trimmed them this side. So now I'm going to turn it round and trim them this side. Now this is the only bit that you need to, to think about because you've got your fabrics where they meet in that corner and that corner, mm -hmm. but you can see it's a little bit over here and a little bit over there. So now when you line them up, you do need to line the zero or the four and a half, depending which you want to do, right where those two fabrics join. And then you want to have it on that 45 degree line. So you line it up on the zero and along that line. Mm -hmm. And now when I trim it to my zero and my four and a half, you will see, phewy, that works. Look at that. That the fabrics go right to the corners. See, I'm not being funny, Wendy, oh, but it we doesn't go. matter. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna say, it doesn't matter whether you've been doing patchwork for 12 months or 12 years or 24 years no one's half square triangles come oh, out like that. Oh, you're trying to make me no, feel without, better now, without, aren't without you? Trimming, <laughs> without trimming, I've, I've, you know. <laughs> you're trying to make me feel better. Well, Hannah, our producer now, is teasing me mercy. Go, I just make mine the right size. That sounded wrong. That isn't what I meant. You know I didn't mean it like that. What I meant was, I, I'm going red now. I can feel it. Um, <laughs> I, I just do them the size. I'm completely honest. I never make mine the right size. <laughs> no, I just, I, you know, I have trimmed, but I'll be honest with you, I always found it a little bit of a faff with a regular exactly. ruler. Exactly. But that's yes. great because you can do two size, boom, boom, and it's so And also, easy. I'm not doing it to its, its potential because in here you've got the four and a half inch square. Mm. Um, so you would need to cut at that side and that side. And this is just personal. I prefer to go from the zero um, because it's just how my brain thinks. Understood. So, you know how my brain works. It, it's not conventional. It does its own thing most of the time. <laughs> so, I've, it's the first time I've met Jesse today and it was like, I am like this 24-7. <laughs> yeah, well, we did warn Jesse. I'm kidding, I'm <laughs> kidding. We love you, Wendy. We love you. No, Your energy I, I, is amazing. I, I do know that I am... Um, I am a little bit much <laughs> first thing in the morning. Well, you and I would be fine, you know, we because I'm a morning person too. I I leap out of bed and I'm raring to go. But some people are not morning people, are oh, they? Oh, I've been told many a time by Hannah to go in the green room. <laughs> it's like, just go in the green room. <laughs> Yeah. I think she's used to me by now, Some isn't she? Some people just need a few hours, don't they? Just to sort of till their blood starts flowing. Or a week with flowing. me in my case. <laughs> <laughs> and all I'm doing is, and this time I've decided that I'm going to look at the four and a half. And okay, so it doesn't matter which side you go. It doesn't matter which side you do, as long as you remember to get that 45 degree line. Now, if you do it from the zero, you do have to pick a line. So what you want to make sure is that you can cut. You don't want to pick that line. So you just want to choose mm. the line that's best for the square that you're cutting. Mm -hmm. And that one for me is that one. So there are multiple oh, 45 yes. degree lines on there. Yes, gotcha. there are. No, I'm going to do yeah. that one. That one's better for me. 
That's a great little trimmer. Well, you oh, can still is. use that for cutting strips and Oh, yes. And oh, yes. Fabulous. This gets used so much. Yeah. Um, the big one is brilliant. It, it really... <laughs> You just have to ignore me because I've cut that one. It's because I was talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> entirely my fault. Yes, you, you interrupted me. So this block's fine. got three half square triangles. It, it has. <laughs> I'm going to put it in, though. Put it now, in. Did we have it on the outside? Or the, uh, on the outside. Yeah. So that one needs to be that way, that one. So I'm just making sure. Yeah, that one is much smaller, so that's not going to... No, oh, it's not too it's much. Not that's fine. That's fine. It'll that, that'll do. There I will unpick go. it when I get home because I like things perfect. Now, and, and all, the next thing you do, and this is a very simple block, you just place the pieces, and if you've cut them all out to the instructions, you will have them all. So I'm going to put them in here. Now, don't be scared about this one in the centre, because it looks like it's not going to fit. Mm. But that's because we haven't lost the half inch by the quarter of inch seam allowance Got there. And then we're going to place right sides together. And then I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch. Now, it is quite important when you're making something like a quilt that's got so many um, lines to sew, and so many seams that you do make sure that you've got your quarter of inch. Yes. So. And are there, is there anything in particular you do to check that or to um, stay on top of it? I know after a while you yeah. you know, don't you? I know this machine. I, I, I was just about to say I play with this. Well, it, sh it's, it is play to me mm. because I, I love it so much. But So I know what my machine does and I tend to set it at the zero so the central so that the needle central, I haven't this time, but I normally would. And then on my little plate here, I've got my quarter of an inch mark. So okay. I just run it up like that. So that's quite unusual for yes. quilters to use the mark on their sewing machine, but it is yes. one option. It's one option, or you've got your quarter of an inch foot. So you'll use your quarter of an inch foot, which is what I tend to do most of the time. Don't know why I didn't do it this time, but I didn't. Um, or what you could do is get some scrap fabric and sew down. And I don't know if um, a lot of, especially if you're new, um, um, realize that when you're doing a straight stitch obviously the the side the that bit the zigzag side mm -hmm. doesn't come into play because you're just going straight aren't you mm. so that would change the position of your needle so just sew and then measure it mm -hmm. and then if it's not quite then just move your needle, move your needle so that's over. what I do but I, I know this machine really yeah. well so I know what it can and what it can do. Lots of machines as well have a quarter of an inch <laughs> stitch on them as yes, well they do. so for example you just program in that particular stitch and it will automatically move the needle over with your regular foot to mm -hmm. sew a quarter yes. but I would just say as a little caveat um, wh whether you're using the marks on your sewing machine the foot or the stitch to get your quarter of an inch it's still worth making a couple of units and then measure them. Obviously, Wendy's trimmed her yep. half square triangles back, but measure. When you sew two squares together, measure them now. If it's not the exact mathematical measurement that it's supposed to be, before you make a gazillion units, do something to change if it's over or under. So, Wendy, you're joining your yes. two half square triangles with a centre rectangle. With that one. And you do that top and bottom? Yes, we do that top and bottom. So I'm placing right sides together. And um, the good thing about this, there's nothing to worry about. One side is completely got no seams at all, so you don't Great. have to worry about matching. So you just match up. top and bottom? Yes, definitely, and sew down. But Thanks for your company, everyone, this morning, <laughs> by the way. I'm just flicking through... Facebook, we've got such a, a bumper audience oh. today. When do you have been missed? <laughs> Very much missed. It just makes me so happy. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, you're never allowed to take time off ever again. But then, you know, we miss you and absence oh. makes the heart grow fonder and all that, does not it? I should think you've all had a rest because I am a little Stop bit. I know, it. I just like bounding in the morning. Stop it. Um, I just, and again, another top tip is when you're pressing on the back here, if you press towards the strip, then this section here is going to be nice and flat mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. If you press that way, then you're going to have four layers of fabric there. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you press that way, you're just going to have two on each side. And it does make a difference to keep it nice and flat. Because when you come to quilt it, you don't want any lumps and bumps. No, we don't gosh no. Bumps. And we all know the sort of, you know, press to the dark side. But that's mm -hmm. one 
sort of pressing Well, this is the dark line. side, so I've been quite lucky here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's that's one pressing guideline, press to the mm. dark side, but also press away from points exactly. is another yeah. one. And, and sometimes where you've got the choice, it's not just about the dark or the light fabric. It might be something else like a point. And, and also nesting as well, whereas in this mm. case it doesn't matter because we're now going to be adding a strip that has got no seams in at right. all, we don't have to worry about nesting. Great. And sim nestling, sim nesting just means pressing the fabric one way on one piece, one way the other, and they nest together. Now I just wanted to show you, so I behaved and did the quarter of an inch on this one, and it fits on this one. It's, oh yeah, it's not too bad actually. So oh, I think that's a pretty good match. That's not too bad. So I changed the position of my foot just to show you, but actually that's not too if bad, those is it? Did, If those three strips, Wendy, didn't line up, what would you do? I'd cry. Simple. <laughs> um, <laughs> good. That was what I hoped you'd say. It, this actually depends. If it's way, way out, yeah. then clearly there's something not, not quite right. Um, this, and then... This is, this is the one that is more important to me because if I've got all these equal on there, then I know my square. Mm. Or... Again, it depends. I might sew it and then just leave a little bit and then trim it off. At the end of the day, as long as all the squares are the same size, for this pattern, no okay. one's going to notice it a little sure. bit. But what I would normally do is I would just tease, tease that. If this was shorter, smaller, yeah. I would tease that. Yeah. If it was a bit longer, then I would make it fit. So yeah. in that case, you would pin both ends. Yeah. I know that wasn't the answer. I was teasing you there, so I shouldn't do that, should I? That's very naughty of me, Stuart. <laughs> I've got to get my own back somehow. Haven't That's I? what we've come to expect <laughs> from the Orlando. <laughs> so I would pin both ends yep. and the centre. Yep. So I would find the centre yes. of both of them, and then I would tease these in. Yeah. I mean, you're hoping, and, and I do keep going on about the pop sack, if you've done your preparation of your project and your seam allowance consistency, you shouldn't be too far out. True enough. That's what we're aiming for, it isn't it? Is. And I like yes. what you said about, you know, if there's a significant mm -hmm. difference, you need to stop and think why. Yes, and this do. is and this is why I know I bang on about this, but this is why we should always find these things out when we've just cut a few units yep. or one block, not the whole thing. Because you might have cut one of your patches mm -hmm. wrong. Yeah. And then goodness, if you've only cut one patch wrong, no big deal. But if you've cut them all wrong, um, th then I would cry. Hi, Stuart. This <laughs> quilt is together. fab. <laughs> Always love to watch Wendy. Oh. She. I'm not reading fast enough, clearly. I'm putting too much expression in. She always gives good tips and hints and is a delight to watch. Oh. Collector in Merseyside. Totally, what, what that lady said. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> totally agree. She's got a couple of minutes left, Wendy. Yeah, so that's a long enough hour. I know, well. I know. It's never long enough for me. So that's what I would do. I would find the centre point and um, mark it at those three pivotal points, so each end and the centre, and then do a bit of jiggly wiggling. But if, to your point, um, to do one block, I wouldn't even do that. I would use a scrap piece of fabric. <laughs> I would yeah. just have a little play. Yeah. I wouldn't cut into anything no. until I was familiar yeah. um, with with the pattern and once you've made this once then you probably will be able to do it fine yeah, yeah absolutely fine, fine. Um, and it is a quilt I could make again and again because because the really clever thing is that color placement makes such yes. a difference yeah. and feature fabrics and you know you could even like where you matched up the if you matched up the cross and the half square triangles that go against the cross were similar fabrics or similar tones and then something different on the outside you could create well there's so many different ways you could do there's this so many um yeah. yeah you could you could there could be two or three people buy the same kit and they all be different yeah and that's what i really like so that one considering i did cut it a little bit <laughs> scoody with it's all come, right it's come end, out hasn't perfect it? um and now I don't, they, they will all be the same size yeah. because I've made them all the same size. That is a lovely colour It is way, gorgeous, isn't it? it is gorgeous, isn't oh. it? Wendy, thank you for You're showing us welcome. how to make the complete block. Um, it's really straightforward and easy, brilliant demonstrations, fabulous tips, Wendy, thank, thank you so much. You're welcome. I can't wait till 11 o'clock. I will see you then. Yes. Thank you for that. You're very welcome. See you in an hour. Now, 
Um, let's have a quick look through those bundles that Wendy was working with. We'll start with the actual one that uh, Wendy used for a demo, which is the grey version. So this one has got a metre of the ivory, and then you've got six half metres, that gorgeous charcoal grey words, all different types of American tree. Then you've got that mega gingham, beautiful little floral and sort of acorn print. The main blossom print. This is gorgeous, isn't it? These absolutely beautiful prints there. Really nice selection, nice balance of the charcoal and the orange, plus quilt instructions for $59.99. Those details on screen are for the grey version. So that's what option one, the grey. We'll go teal next. It's been super popular. Single figures of this one left, so. If that's the one you love, go for it. You've got that mega gingham, beautiful florals. This one's got much more of the green tones in, lots and lots of that lovely teal. So this is the one that Wendy used to make up her version, which is hanging behind. And I think when you can see the whole quilt made up, it's always, you know, you know exactly what you're getting to. Except that, of course, depending on where you place the fabric, you might change the look of that quilt quite dramatically. Orange next. Orange next. Real dose of sunshine and summer, this one. We've, Wendy, you've kept the um, ivory the same throughout. I have. So, which is lovely. It adds that lovely brightness to it. These are kind of your turmeric and saffron and those gorgeous, rich, spicy colours. That is really lovely, isn't it? Get your quilt instructions, all of your fabric that you need. And remember, all of these bundles have had a little discount applied to them before we ever got to air. Um, but if you were watching earlier when the charcoal bundle was helicoptered in, you'll see that they all started off at £61.66 or something. The 61.91 so we've done a little discount on everything just to make nice easy numbers <laughs> and then this last version is called sage and this is that one that we renamed pistachio <laughs> me and wendy all, well i wanted to rename it wasabi but um, wendy was much more sensible and called it pistachio or even apple i think just think that's lovely and fresh i would put that into my kitchen right now absolutely lovely that is lovely but apparently i can't have it unless i buy it so there we go just check my pockets wendy said check my pockets about my my um cushion my casbah cushion that i'm going to show you how to make in the next hour so we've both got our eyes on each other's work today haven't we <laughs> put it down it's gorgeous put it down thank you darling it is. <laughs> well, i love your work might go and have a little snuggle on it yeah i'll do it have you a little miss nap it for an hour have will a you? nap <laughs> oh yeah. well, i need it the next exactly. hour so those are our four bundles you can also get the instructions on their own if you'd like um and we've also actually just to mention that night that's 9.99 well worth it actually that's a great pattern and one that you'd make many many times we have also got a design roll um, in these fabrics, uh, brand new from Moda, it's called Cozy Up and um, there are some other extra prints in there actually. There's a little tiny dot print, can you see? Look at those, those, oh those are lovely. Yeah, liking that. $47.99 for the mode of Cozy Up design roll pack of 40 pieces. Each one four and a half, four, two and a half inches sorry, by 42 inches wide. Salvage to salvage. Funnily enough, I was having a look earlier on at Pam and Nikki Lintoff um, jelly roll quilts in a weekend. And um, there was lots of designs that you could make using that jelly roll. I've made lots of them. Have you? They're yeah, they are lovely. Yeah. Gorgeous. Now, um, next hour, we have got some fabulous tools. We've also got some lovely fabrics as well, including the fabrics that you will need to make this cushion. And I will show you just how quick and easy it is to make. So that's in our next hour. It's just time to grab yourself a cup of tea. I'm hinting, and I will see you right back here. Don't go anywhere.
Hello everyone, my name's Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles. So embroidery, cross stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making. Oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new. And I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it. And you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. And I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping. We are moving home. From Wednesday the 26th of January, Sewing Street and Yarn Lane are moving to Freeview Channel 73. We will still be on Sky Channel 670, YouTube and Facebook Live as normal. It's only the Freeview channel that is changing. Keep your eyes peeled on our Facebook, Instagram and our email newsletter for more details. And if you watch us on Freeview, don't forget to tune into Freeview Channel 73 from 8am on Wednesday the 26th of January. Hi friends, welcome back to Sewing Street. It's great to have your company. I'm Stuart Hillard. It's great to meet you, if you've never been here before. Um, home of all things sewing and soft craft. Uh, and recently we're moving, I'm gonna say moving to channel 73, because some of you have still got us on 72. Kind of depends where you are in the country. But however you're watching us today, it's wonderful to have your company. This hour is mostly about tools, but we're gonna start with a bundle of fabrics, which I fell in love with just over a week ago. Had to nab and I just said, I'm taking these home, I'm taking these away. And, um, cause I couldn't wait to use them for something. Well done if you've already ordered yours. We had lots of these go today on pre-order. Um, this is a bit of a, I'm gonna give you a tip now, grab these while you can, because these are going to fly out very, very quickly. This is the Rose Terrace Fat Quarter Pack. Now, I thought that there were 10 fabrics in here, and while I was doing my calculations for what I wanted to make, 
I'd worked it out as 10 fat quarters, which would have been great. But the truth is you get 14 fat quarters in this bundle and they are gorgeous. I was showing this off to Deputy Joan yesterday and um, morning Deputy Joan, if you're watching. Uh, and she said, oh, what lovely traditional fabrics. And I hadn't really thought of them as traditional because they're sort of quite bright, jolly colours you know um, but I mean they are they're absolutely glorious aren't they you've got these wonderful turquoise blues I absolutely love that print I love all the prints to be honest but they are gorgeous so you've got some lovely turquoisey blues okay and then you've got these absolutely stunning sort of turkey reds these are delicious and you know, as soon as I got these fabrics, I was thinking shabby chic, but then I was thinking kind of, you know, in the souk or the casbah, you know, and, and it kind of went with that vibe then. Um, got some lovely kind of creamy tones. I mean, they're all just gorgeous. I think they'd be amazing for making a, a box, like a sewing box out of. So you've got these lovely creamy tones, pinky tones beautiful and then you've also got this one is amazing this kind of bubblegum pink print I mean, when you open it out and see more of it it's absolutely stunning isn't it and then this delicious sort of apple green so I mean all together they're just absolutely glorious so once I saw the fabrics, I thought, I know exactly what I want to do with that. It's nothing hard. It's really simple, but so effective. So I made my Casbah cushion. I'll just hold this up for you so you can have a little look. Um, quick and easy. Notepads at the ready. Let me show, tell you how I made it. Couldn't have been easier. No points to match, which we love. Easy peasy. This is really big actually. This is 24 inches by 32 inches. So actually this would be great as a cock quilt. You could you could do this top and then just layer it, quilt it, bind it. Don't do the, the bobble trim. Um, layer it, quilt it, bind it and that would make a great cock quilt. You could do half the size. So do 12 by 24. Sorry, 18 by 24. 18 by what is it? Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be 16 by 24. Thank you. 16 by 24. And that would be a pillowcase size. You could do two pillowcases. Or you could do this kind of mega cushion. Okay, which is 24 by 32. So what I did was, I'm going to lay it down flat. What I did was, from each of my fat quarters, I cut one strip, which was four and a half inches wide by the width of the fat quarter. Now you're going to, from that strip, you're going to cut it down into two rectangles, um, which are each eight and a half inches long. So actually you can cut that strip along the shorter side of the fat quarter, which still leaves you a nice chunk for something else. So you could certainly make at least two of these big cushions out of one fat quarter bundle. So four and a half by eight and a half inch rectangle. And you need to cut a total of 28. That means each fabric, two rectangles. All right. Um, once you've done that, you then need to arrange them in the order that you want to sew them. Now, what you're going to do, if I just pull this across for a second, so that we've got, I just want to show you, so we've got four strips, all right? So if you just have a look overhead, you've got one, two, three, four. So we're stopping at the centre. So these are our first 14 fabrics and you're going to sew three together in a line, four together in a line, three together in a line, four together in a line. Okay, And I've used one of each of the fabrics, one of each of the rectangles to do that. And I just kind of arranged them fairly haphazardly, but I just made sure that kind of dominant colours like the reds and the blues were kind of away from each other to some extent quarter of an inch seam allowance to sew them together and you just sew three, four, three, four. Once you've done that and you've pressed your seams, 
Either way, open doesn't make any difference at all. Do what you feel comfortable with. And then you're going to sew those four strips together. And all I did was I kind of offset the rows. You need to keep your line of three is going to be your finished size. So you're not going to trim anything off the top or bottom of the row of three. That makes you 24 and a half inch strip. So these ones are going to hang off the ends. When you sew all the strips together, just make sure that this row and this row line up. Sorry, this row and this row line up. OK, right, so you're going to do that. Now, this section, this second section is exactly the same fabrics, exactly the same placement. But then I flipped the whole unit around so that now this fabric is up here. This fabric is down here. So each of the fabrics is in opposition. OK, easy way to put your fabrics together they look great nothing's going to be kind of touching once that's done you can then trim the overhang off on these two sides okay and just make sure it comes out at 24 and a half inches by 32 and a half inches layer it quilt it now i discovered a lovely pattern on my long arm machine which i quilted this in it's a zigzag okay you might be able to see that slightly more closely. I don't know. It's, and I used a bright pink thread for this. You can just about see. Now, this would be really easy to do using a walking foot. And they're kind of spaced out. And then there are gaps. And then there are a few lines that are quite close together. I just think it's really cool. You could also just quilt this in straight lines or wobbly lines. Most of us can sew a wobbly line, can't we? <laughs> You know what? You can set yourself up to succeed or you can set yourself up to fail. And so I always say to my, like my quilting classes, machine quilting classes, if you can sew a wobbly line, do a wobbly line. Just do it with confidence. It's meant to look like that. If it's meant to be a straight line and you wobble, everyone notices that. If it's meant to be a wobbly line, it's meant to be a wobbly line. So then once it's all layered, quilted, just trim the edges so it's all nice and square. And then what I did was I added bobble trim. Now, I just bought bobble trim from my local department store, bright pink. And um, you need three metres to go around this, three metres of bobble trim. And I just basted it in place with the bobbles facing inwards all the way around my quilt top. Um, that's my top tip. I don't pin it in place. I just hold it and then I sew nice and close to the tape, to the edge. Don't forget, of course, you can watch this programme back when you get your fat quarter bundle and um, make your lovely Casbar cushion. And then for the back of this, I just did an envelope back and I used a bright red. I thought that pop of bright red would be really fun. Um, I added a strip of fabric to one side. This again was from one of the fat quarters just to add a bit of extra. And you just basically want to divide up your um, cushion or your pillow. I do like two thirds and then two thirds and then just hem the end. With this one, I actually sewed a wider strip of fabric on and then folded it back in and, and pressed it and hemmed it. But super easy. You miss the measurements, Joanne. What were they again? Really easy. So each rectangle is four and a half inches by eight and a half inches. OK, so from each fat quarter, you're just going to cut a four and a half inch wide strip across your fat quarter. And then from that, cut two four and a half by eight and a half inch rectangles. So you end up with 28 rectangles of fabric. Mix and match. Sew them in uh, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four. Offset them. Keep the threes straight. The fours overhang halfway just to stagger. And I absolutely did not try and match these up or measure. It was just roughly. And you could have them much more offset if you wanted to. And then once you've sewn the whole thing together and given it a press, just trim the top and bottom edges straight. But you shouldn't be needing to trim anything off the strip of three at the top or bottom. That should be straight and level. That's your 24 and a half inches. 
okay and your your eight strips sewn together will make you 32 and a half inch on this side okay you get at least two of these cushions from one fat quarter bundle and there are single figures now of that fat quarter bundle so if you love the rose terrace be quick Collector in Merse Merseyside received hers yesterday. Uh, so you already saw them. I thought, I'm going to nab those. Good for you. Um, received these yesterday after seeing them with you. They are the most gorgeous designs, especially the blue ones. Fabulous. They really are. Let me just grab the fabrics again and show you. you get, and you get so many of them. Um, I couldn't believe it when I opened the pack up because I thought there were 10. And then I thought there were 12. And then I'd done, and I thought, OK, I'll cut them in, in lots of four. And then I'd got two left and I thought, what's going on here? And there's actually 14 fabrics. Now, of course, you could throw in a solid here if you wanted to make a quilt. You could throw in a white, an ivory. You could throw in a magenta or a red, a turquoise. Any of those, an ivory, all would look great. Um, you could even throw in black if you really wanted to make those colours pop, but a white or an ivory, and then you could make things like, um, you know, just sawtooth stars, variable stars, nine patch blocks would look absolutely beautiful. But I thought with that sort of lovely intensity of colour and pattern, for me, that was an opportunity to just put print to print. So for me, that gives it a kind of boho look. It gives it a lovely, relaxed, casual, maybe kind of, you know, I could imagine this in a French chateau uh, on a chaise for me to cuddle down on. But I could equally see this in a casbah or a kind of Moroccan cafe where I might sit and drink mint tea. Hannah could see this in her house. I'm going to say over my dead body, Hannah because this is going to be my yoga pillow. I can imagine doing a happy baby on that. You know that, that uh, this is my favourite one. Either that or corpse pose are my favourites where you just literally lie on the ground. I could do yoga like that all day. But happy baby is when you like bring your feet up and then you sort of hold your toes, don't you? Just it's rock. It's lovely. So calming. Happy baby. And if you are... Uh, wanting to make baby projects by the way don't forget to join us on Friday when it is officially baby day I'm guesting that day with Vix she might bring Maisie in who knows I might bring Mrs Mills um, and we've got loads of baby projects this would also make a really lovely baby quilt uh, in these fabrics or not in these fabrics in something else you could make a yoga bag with these fabrics Th this would be glorious for a bag actually and again same pattern same idea I mean, I've done four and a half by eight and a half inch rectangles, but you could vary that depending on the size of the bag you wanted to make. But um, it's just a really simple, easy pattern. There's virtually no matching or, or, or anything to worry about or think about. Um, collectors message back in. I couldn't resist them. They're even better in li real life. And there is not a design or colorway that I don't like. Great buy for me. Thank you so much for that message, Collector. Well done if you've got those in your basket and you've checked out. You will really enjoy these fabrics, I'm sure. I love them. I'm going to pop that back up there. Out of Wendy Orlando's way, because she had her eyes on that too, didn't she? <laughs> okay. Come with me. Come with me. Just got my tea. Lovely. Mm. Now then. Yes, I'm just going to pop my tea there. Now, we're going to start with an extra large cutting mat. Now, this is sort of, we're wish list time now. This is kind of, in an ideal world, if I could have everything that I wanted, this would be on my list. This is absolutely ginormous. Absolutely ginormous. I feel the need just to turn this around so that the centre name, there we go, is the right way up. There we go. 
This is absolutely huge. It is one metre by one and a half metres. Um, I'm giving those um, uh, metric measurements, but it's actually marked in imperial. So it's marked in inches. OK, so I see perfect for us um, quilters that use imperial measurements. So this is all in inches. So this dimension is 30, 39 inches. And then this one here is 59 inches. So huge. So for example, I think this would be absolutely brilliant as your sort of main cutting board. If you're a dressmaker, for example, and you like to rotary cut your pattern pieces, um, there would be very few pattern pieces for any project that you would ever not get on this mat. So you could lay out your fabric, you could lay out your pattern pieces on top and rotary cut, you know, your trouser legs, your jacket or your coat front and backs and all of your smaller pieces as well without having to shift around, without having to move a mat. If you're a quilter, this could be your, you know, over your whole surface, your whole table surface, and then you could do all your cutting on it. But I think where it would really come into its own are things like if you're cutting really big applique blocks, if you were doing things like cutting your borders or background fabrics. Again, it's so useful just to be able, because you could literally have one and a half metres in length. Um, well, just about, just slightly under for cutting. Uh, which means that, for example, if you were doing a border for a, for a quilt, you'd only have like two layers and you'd have almost three metres in length. So you could cut your border. They're at 169 which I know is a considered purchase, but I think this is a one-off purchase, isn't it, really? Um, it's the kind of thing you're going to buy and then be just using forever and ever more. Now, we do offer split pen. Just a little grubby mark there. Um, <laughs> couldn't resist. Uh, we do offer split pay on this, three split pays of 56.66, just to help you spread the cost if you'd like to take advantage of that. Now this is a self-healing cutting mat and it's from Horn, who I of course associate, and I'm sure you do too, with fabulous sewing furniture. Um, they also make these amazing cutting mats. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. It's really sturdy. They're three, millim three millimetres thick, uh, single-sided. I mean, you can use the other side for cutting, but it is plain. It's blank on the back, but it, it is also a cutting surface. Now, one of the things I want to mention about this is, um, like, if you were going to a show, I mean, I mean I, I've never seen one this, uh, one this size in a quilt shop, ever. Uh, for sale, but I have seen them at quilt shows. There's no way I'm trying to take this back home on the bus or even trying to squish it into my car uh, because it just wouldn't happen. So mail order, it's the way to go. But the size of it, I mean, what would you pay to, to mail this? It's 3 dollars postage. If you've bought something else today, you've already paid your postage. Now this actually gets distributed um, from uh, from a partner retailer rather than straight from us uh, and they will literally drive it to your house and drop it off at your house now if you live in the highlands of scotland or in i or in the islands uh best to ring um customer service and what they'll do is they'll put you in contact just to arrange your delivery and that usually happens, doesn't it, if you live in very, very remote places. But yeah, it comes um, direct at no extra cost. OK, so absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It will come flat and pristine, of course. Remember, with your with your cutting mats, never roll them. Don't leave them in the car overnight. Don't leave them, you know, kind of propped up on things because, again, just the weight can cause them to bend or curve. The best place to store them is completely flat, either under a bed or under the sofa or something like that, or just keep it flat on a table like we've got it here. It is 150 centimetres this away, a metre and a half by one metre. 
Let me just, it is a heavyweight piece of equipment. I'm disappearing. How's that? There we go, I'm back. A message from Lorraine who has this cutting mat. Morning guys, love, love, love my cutting mat. From dressmaking, quilt sizing and bag making, I can highly recommend Rain in Bath. Thanks for that Rain, yeah. I totally agree. I mean, especially like I say, for those larger cutting projects for quilters, um, it's such a boon. I mean, any cutting, you'd be cutting one half square triangle on this mat, you'd be cutting a bag handle. But equally, if you're cutting your long side borders for a quilt, to have a metre and a half of cutting board is amazing. But if you're a dressmaker, I mean, whether you use scissors, or a rotary cutter to cut out your, your pattern pieces when you're dressmaking. Protecting your work surface is super important. Having a smooth, flat surface to run your scissors along while you're cutting is essential. But if you rotary cut, the last thing you want to do is hardly speeding up the job. If you're rotary cutting four inches and then you have to move the cutting mat under, or you go off the edge of your rotary board. I mean, a small rotary board is this big, isn't it? Most of us have a cutting mat. In fact, I'm just going to grab a cutting mat. Mm -hmm. So this is a normal size. This is um, 16 inch by 21. 20, 21 inch. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Which is fab, you know, I mean, lovely and portable and, you know, movable feast. Love this as well. But, I mean, look, <laughs> one, two and a half. How many of these you're getting on one? It's just incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Um, it is such a brilliant piece of kit. Um, now, Julie's just asked, is it reversible? Sorry if you mentioned it early. Julie, my love, that's what I'm here for, to answer any questions. Not a problem. Now, the flip side of it, I just want to show you, is plain. Okay, there's no markings on this. However, I would always say, um, don't use your mat for measuring. I know it's got markings on it, but over time, especially if you're cutting in the same place, those marks can become um, fuzzy, and I always, I trust the markings on my ruler, I use the markings on my ruler. My mat is there as a cutting surface. So the fact that the other side is plain makes no difference to me. So I would use both sides for cutting. So yeah, it is reversible, but only one side has the markings. I'm just gonna... Now we did a little sort of price comparison, not so much on the... Um, cutting mat but just on the postage um, and we found postage prices of between 10 and 15 pounds um, for postage it'll vary but I mean it's a big it's a big item this is coming from horn directly they'll bring it to your house um, it may take slightly longer than your normal delivery from sewing street um, but uh, an absolutely fabulous piece of kit which you're going to use, well it's going to be the cutting mat. And it, especially if you've got a dedicated sewing room, brilliant. If you haven't, store this flat under a bed or under a sofa when it's not in use. Keep it flat. Don't um, prop it up against something. Brilliant. Maureen's messaged in. Is it marked in inches or centimetres, Stuart, from Maureen? Um, Maureen, it's measured in, or marked out in inches. It's in inches and goes right from zero to 56 along this um, side. Um, and then on the opposite side, it goes from zero to 36. Now, there are markings around the outside edge in centimetres. Um, so you could use th these, but they're just on the outside edge. So it goes from zero to um, about 96 centimetres. And then across the bottom, that edge goes from zero to 100 and 
da, 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 about 145, 150, something like that, 147. But basically the markings are inches. Now we are very limited stock on these. So if you fancy one of these, brilliant purchase. Now, if you've any questions about delivery to your area, the best thing you can do is to give our customer centre, call centre a ring. Or message us. Um, it's the extremities, the highlands and islands, um, that we might just have to contact Horn. But they will deliver, but it'll just be arranged. Uh, studio at sewingstreet.com if you've any questions about delivery. Fabulous. Fabulous. So that's our really big cutting mat. Now, next up, we're going to talk rotary cutters. Um, now, I'm just going to grab a couple of options onto the table because it's a couple of things to talk about. Now, this is a rotary cutter that I've been using now for oh, the best part of 20 years. And this is my go-to rotary cutter. Absolute go-to rotary cutter. Um, and it's the Ulfa. Uh, and it's a sort of, the reason why I started using it, first of all, was because uh, of the ergonomic design. So it's really comfortable in, in my hands. Um, I love the grip of it. But what I also really like about it is the trigger uh, mechanism. So is this one I can, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to properly unpack it. We use them all the time here. And um, our open one has gone missing, so I should be your eyes and ears here. So this is the one I use pretty much all the time at home. I have another, I have a, um, one of the straight ones, but this has always been my go-to. So let me just talk you around it. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're left or right-handed. Um, it's set up for right-handed cutting, okay, when it comes out of the packet. But if you're a left-hander, all you've got to do is literally just unscrew take the blade off and flip everything so the blade will be on this side and, and this part will go on this side and this section will be over this side and then it's a left-handed rotary cutter. Um, you've got a locking mechanism here and this is your squeezy trigger. So I'll just show you how it works. So at the moment this is locked so it can't be used. If I was storing this, if I was going to class, I would have it locked and that's just pushed straight through from this side. If I push that red button in now, okay, it's now on the other side. This is now unlocked, but the blade hasn't gone anywhere and that's because it's trigger act activated. So when I squeeze the trigger to use it, the blade pops out. But, and this is what's fundamental for me, this is the reason why I now use it all the time, is because when I put it down and let go of the trigger, it, the blade goes back in. So you do not have to, I always used to say in my classes, cut, then shut. Okay, so don't leave blades out. Now you can lock the blade out if you want to. So I would use that, for example, if you've got, say you've got something like some motor, um, well, I'm thinking in particular things like um, carpal tunnel, where if that constant squeezing of a, tr of a trigger and holding that in would make your fingers go numb or t pins and needlesy from that constant pressure, then if you lock it on open, then you don't have to squeeze that trigger all the time. It will stay out and you can hold the, the handle with sort of less pressure, if you like, and cut. But personally, I, I don't use the locking mechanism with the blade out, but you can. I just hold the trigger and cut, and then the minute I put it down and let go of the trigger, the blade goes back in. Um, for that reason, they are absolutely worth their weight in gold. Now, I remember when I bought my Ulfa, Ulfa, such a name to trust in terms of cutting. I've uh, been producing rotary blades in Japan for more than 50 years, um, and lots of us have the straight Rotary cutter. I remember when I bought my original Ulfa trigger cutter, I'm sure it was something like about, it was either about £24.99 or it was about nearly £30 for it when I bought it. And that was 20 years ago. They were really expensive. 
a lot more expensive than the regular rotary cutter but because of the design and actually unless you lose this it will never need replacing the actual um, rotary cutter. Your blade is the only thing you need to change. So as long as you look after it and you don't lose it, the actual body of your rotary cutter is going to last you for years and years and years. Um, standard blades, you don't have to use Ulfa blades. You can use any 45 millimeter blade in there and it will work. And remember, you can have it locked open locked closed and so for example if it's out on the table or if it's in your hand and you're cutting and then you drop it on the floor um the blade instantly goes back in so the blade's not going to still be out by the time it reaches the floor and toes or pets or anything else um that is one reason, of course, why I wouldn't lock it with the blade open, but you can if you need to. I have one of these and love it, says Lisa, because you don't have to remember to cover the blade. You're absolutely right, Lisa. That's the best reason, I think, for having one. They are really safe. But also, it's the design as well. They do feel really comfortable in your hand. They're curved, they fit nicely in your palm. They also have, um, Here's a top tip for you. They have a kind of textured section here, and this is for your finger. So actually, when you're rotary cutting, the pressure shouldn't all come from your wrist. All that downward pressure doesn't need to come all from your wrist. If you put your finger on that textured part, which we are all supposed to really, that's how we're supposed to have our hand when we rotary cut, um, you get more pressure and more control from that finger. Super design, really super design. And now 1999, which I just think is brilliant and a lot less than my original Ulfa ergonomic cutter that I bought many, many years ago, which I've still got and still use all the time. Fabulous. Got some FIFO reviews to share with you for that Ulfa 45mm rotary cutter. Very good rotary cutter and safe. Jennifer and Devon, yeah. It's that safety aspect I really like about it too. As long as you don't um, lock that blade out, the minute you put it down, blades away. Very good quality cutter, Sheila in Lincolnshire. Thanks for that. One more, great. Oh, perfectly wrapped and perfect item, Deborah and Kent. There's nothing wrong with perfectly wrapped, is there? I like that too. Yeah, it's a great cutter. It's a really, really great cutter. And again, as I say, change your blade regularly. Any 45 millimeter rotary blade can go in there. And that includes also, of course, if you like the sort of deckle edge or pinked edge, wavy edged blades, you might use those for dressmaking. Um, you can use those in there too. Now, we have a little interesting fact for you from Hannah. Our Alpha Corporation, they did, they did. They invented the very first rotary cutter in 1979. And I was showing the other day, um, Hannah and everyone at home, that um, originally the blades, you, you, you see it often on rotary cutting blades, have numbers all the way around the blade. And the original reason for that was when Alpha invented the rotary cutter, they intended that the blade would remain um, fixed. It didn't go round. And so what you did was you had it fixed on number one, you did some cutting, and then when the number one position became blunt, you moved it around to number two, did your cutting, moved it around to number three. And when you worked up to the highest number, you knew it was time to throw your blade away and change it. And the, the tooling just stayed so that when they started manufacturing them and the blade did turn, um, it still had the numbers on. And most people's rotary cutter blades have numbers on them, but that was why. It's a bit like an appendix, isn't it? It's kind of obsolete, but still there. <laughs> Collector in Murdersides messaged in to say, I got this after a near miss with a cutter uh, that the blade didn't retract on. Gave me such a fright. I got one of these as I value my fingers. Oh, Collector, absolutely. I always say I've got 10 fingers right now and I'd like to keep them. Thank you. Yes, 
Yes, um, brilliant piece of kit, and we shouldn't ever underestimate how important it is um, to have a comfortable rotary cutter, a safe rotary cutter, because often it becomes it becomes something that we don't even notice in our sewing kit, isn't it? But it's something we probably use every day, every project, and actually spend many, many hours using. Let's have one which is ergonomic, comfortable in our hands, and safe. Now, for those of you who've never tried rotary cutting before that are wondering what size should I go for, I've seen 18 mil, 45, 60 mil. 45 mil is the standard size that the vast majority of us use for all our cutting. 45 mil, brilliant if you're cutting your strips, squares, rectangles, half square triangles, anything like that, bag making, dress making. The little one, the 16 mil, 16 or 18 mil, I forget which size it is, is for things like um, cutting round small templates. It's also really useful for cutting round things like curves, curved piecing or curved items. Um, it's also the size that you would use for slash cutting or chenille cutting. The 60 mil size blades, I would tend to only use for doing my kind of very large cutting jobs. So things like cutting borders, it's just a bit quicker, that's all. But I wouldn't use a 60 mil rotary blade for general cutting. 45 mil, you can cut multiple layers. Now, in the old days, it, we used to say eight layers of fabric. I'd never, ever recommend that. Um, generally now, it's up to six layers of fabric, but I've got to be honest, um, I never cut more than two layers of fabric at a time because you do get inaccuracies with fabric shifting and just the thickness of fabric. And also as well, the thicker the fabric, um, less layers, one layer at a time, because if you're going to get any sort of slippage of either ruler or blade, it's going to be on those thicker layers. So keep it safe, keep it one or two layers. Now, 1999, I think is an absolutely brilliant price. If you're absolutely brand new to quilting and you want a more affordable bundle, and you want a little starter bundle, actually. We've got a great little bundle coming up now. Um, this features your sort of, what, what I would term your standard rotary cutter. Now this whole set is 19.99. This is a great, now this could be your starter set if you've never done rotary cutting before, never done patchwork before. But equally, this could be your spare, this could be your workshop set, this could be your travelling set, this could be the one that you leave at the caravan or in the cottage or, you know, if you're lucky enough to have one of those, my goodness me, can't we be friends? Now in this set, you've got um, a rotary cutting mat, self-healing cutting mat. Uh, this cutting mat is um, size-wise... I want to give the... Ah, here we go. There we go. Inches on one side. So this is 17 inches by 11 inches. There's your cutting size. So great for those kind of trimming jobs, small cutting jobs, as a little travelling uh, companion. It's double-sided, so you've got inches on this side. Uh, it's called Crafter's Dream. And then centimetres on this side. Then you've got a rotary cutter. This is your standard sort of um, straight handle, 45 mil blade. This one, um, retractable blade. So what it, what it does, it has a guard. So when you pull this trigger back, it exposes the blade, but then you have to push the button forward to recover the blade. So that's one that you just have to think about. And then you've also got a rotary cutting ruler and this one is six inches wide and it is 12 inches in length so again a really good one it's got your angle markings 45 degrees 30 and 60 as well so great for your general cutting jobs if you do things like pet foundation paper piecing a lot and you want a little rotary cutting set to have next to your sewing machine this is ideal the price is brilliant isn't it less than 20 pounds to get your self-healing cutting mat your rotary ruler and your rotary cutter all for under 20 pounds lovely message 
from Louise, who's in Staffordshire. I bought this set for a friend just starting out on her quilting journey for Christmas. She was thrilled with it and such good value for money. It's brilliant, isn't it, Louise? I love it. What a lovely gift as well to give somebody. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so ideal if you're starting out, but equally fabulous if you've been doing dressmaking, quilting, patchwork for years and years as a spare, as a next to your sewing machine, little grouping, a workshop set, something that you can take to and from the shed if that's where you do your crafting, something a bit more portable, or maybe you have your normal working space, but just sometimes you like to be able to, I don't know, work in the kitchen. Maybe if you are minding the kids or, you know, you're kind of watching something on the stove. I'm thinking me now, I'm often doing this and kind of cooking something or making something and getting a bit of cutting or patchwork in at the same time. So I'll uh, bring, bring a smaller set down uh, into the kitchen and I can just do a bit of cutting while I'm working. <laughs> yeah, a bit of patchwork, a bit of goat hoof trimming. It's a really fun job though, you know, it's like, it's like um, cutting, cutting toenails, but really big ones. <laughs> yeah, you can watch videos on YouTube. Charlie was very experienced with um, cutting, you know, trimming sheep. Um, uh, hooves, but yeah, goat hooves are a different kettle of fish altogether. Now then, can I just mention the Stripology Squared Mini, because Wendy Orlando was using this earlier on, and I thought it was an absolute revelation watching her, um, because I've used the Stripology rulers for cutting strips, and they are brilliant. And they're worth having just for that. But actually watching Wendy use them to then trim down half square triangles, I just thought was superb. If you missed that, you'll be able to watch that again when it's uploaded. Um, but it was absolutely brilliant using the Stripology. This is the Stripology Squared. Works with units up to six and a half inches. Um, and uh, works in... So like hole and half and hole and a quarter as well. So if you're doing half square triangles or quarter square triangles, works both ways. Um, you've got all your extra lines for lining up and also these squares that are marked as well for squaring up your units. And that has become really popular, really popular method of getting lovely accuracy in things like your half square triangles and your quarter square triangles. And basically the idea there is that you make them slightly bigger than perhaps the pattern tells you to. So if it says three and seven eighths or four and a quarter, you would do four inches or say like four and uh, a half. Make your half square or your quarter square triangles and then square them up. It just means that if there are slightly wobbly edges and it's not, and absolutely, I agree with Wendy, none of us get them perfect. Um, you can then trim them down and square them up and then they will be absolutely perfect. The price $36.99 for that. And again, it's that tool that you're going to use again and again and again. Now, talking of stripology, the extra large Stripology ruler is out of stock. We've only got two of these. Um, and these are the Stripology squared large ver larger version. This is the middle size. Now this Stripology squared um, squares at the bottom for two and a half inch cuts, stars for one and a half inch cuts. So if you're cutting your strips, if you're cutting um, strips from things like fat quarters or half meters, ideal. Um, but you can also, it's got the markings to square up half square triangles and quarter square triangles and blocks up to 12 and a half inches. Now, one of the things I absolutely love about uh, Creative Grids, and I think this is a model for many, many businesses, especially tools and products, is just have a look here on the front cover. Don't ever throw this away, will you? Well, you can still access them, but this QR reader. Now, if you've got a smartphone, you can download a QR code reader. They're free. Just go to the App Store or something like that and download a QR code reader. 
And then you literally just hover up with the camera or just actually with the app over this QR. It'll read it and it will take you straight through to a video demonstration of how to use your ruler. Creative Grids put them on all of their rulers and templates. There's a video for every single one. You can either access it use, using the QR code there. And there it is on the smaller one too. Or, you know, you can go traditional and go to YouTube and just search and you will find them. But I think that's brilliant. This is the mid-sized version that squares up, up to 12 and a half inches. It's also ideal if you like cutting strips and squares and rectangles from things like fat quarters. Uh, $44.99 for this. And there are so many ways that you can use these rulers. You can cut other shapes with them too. Um, watch the videos and look after them. They've got a little hole um, cut through. So the best way to keep them is as we do here at Sewing Street, which is a hook on the wall and actually hang them up. Can you see there they are? Always handy then. And um, it keeps them out of harm's way. Because the thing is, if you leave them propped up on these, they get knocked over and um, it can chip. So keep an eye, look after them. They're a real investment, but they're really, really worth having. Not sure when we're getting the larger ones back in stock either. So um, while you see them, it took us three months before. So. Should we go back over the other way? Bring my tea in my laptop. Now, single figures of the Rose Terrace Fat Quarter pack. 14 Fat Quarters, remember, in this gorgeous pack. As soon as I saw it, I absolutely fell in love and uh, just wanted to make some beautiful projects with it. You get 14 Fat Quarters and each one of them is glorious. Now, there are going to be disappointments here because there are way more of these in baskets than we've actually got stock of. Uh, you get a fat quarter of each one. They're 100% cotton. And, uh, you know, when I saw these on it, we just had them as a little bundle of fabric. I think it was about, I don't know, nine or ten days ago. Um, 15th of January. And I just love them. And I said straight away, as I, when I came off air, I said, is it OK if I take one of these packs home? <laughs> I wish I could say that about everything. <laughs> well, I do say it about quite a lot of things. Um, I said, I just feel like I need to make something with that because it's so beautiful, that fabric. And um, I did indeed make my Casbah cushion. I'll just grab it down and show you again. Uh, I'll just hold it up so you can see. Really, really <laughs> gorgeous and easy, super easy, beginner project this one, uh, or if you want to just make something quick and easy. Uh, now, all you literally do is four and a half inch by eight and a half inch rectangles of fabric. That's all you need to cut, and you need to cut a total of 28. The maths is easy. You've got 14 fat quarters, cut two rectangles, four and a half by eight and a half from each fat quarter. That's it. Arrange them, lines of three, lines of four. Offset them, sew them together, that's it. Now, if you do miss out on these fat quarters, or you don't like them, oh my goodness, why wouldn't you love them? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm teasing. We have got some really nice other fabrics. We've got these Beth Studley. Now, these would work beautifully using exactly the same design um, as that, just those four and a half by eight and a half inch rectangles. This is from Beth's latest range. It's called Henna and um, really inspired by um, Indian Mendy or henna patterns. We're actually going to drop the price on this. It's 89 99 at the moment and we're actually going to drop the price to 78 99 Now let me just show you these fabrics because they are absolute that. Look at that. I'm just going to open that up quickly so you can see. This to me looks like the close-up of a butterfly's wings. If you've ever seen micro photography of a butterfly's wings and they're almost like scales, that is delicious. Um, absolutely beautiful range of fabrics. I might just have to have one of these bundles myself. 
because there are actually only a handful. You're saving £10, over £10, in fact. Oh, let me just pop that one there. You're getting so many fabrics here, you're actually getting 24 fat quarters, which is the full collection. I think this is absolutely glorious. Love these golden shades and turquoise. This would absolutely work in, in my Casbar cushion design. Um, and of course here you've got plenty of fabric to make a quilt. I mean you've got enough fabric to make a small quilt. Um, Oh, now, interesting, interesting, you should say that. Now, Hannah's just been saying that she'd like to use the same idea, rectangles, and then once it's all layered and quilted, then cut it into a really big circle and then add the pom-poms around the edge. As a quilt, as a mat, a floor covering, or as a cushion, as a big round cushion. Yeah, that would be lovely. Well, I was just going to say, that's an idea I took actually in my book, Bags for Life, the picnic chapter, there is a picnic blanket that then pulls up into a rucksack and that's exactly what it is. It's rectangles of fabric sewn together, laid and quilted, then you cut a big circle and make the bag from that. So great minds think alike. Look at that, it's a range of fabrics. Golly gosh, that is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? 24 fat quarters, which equates to six meters of fabric. Now I wonder if anyone can quickly do the maths for me. 78.99 divided by six please. Because the price per meter, that is fab. 13 pound a meter, that is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Less than seven pound for half a meter and this fabric is glorious. Let me just show you. Ah, look at that. We don't have this in any other uh, bundle, by the way, um, these fabrics. So if you're loving these, it's the only way to get it. And you're getting the whole range there. Henna by Beth Studley. Beth does some gorgeous designs as well for things like bags and quilts and accessories. So do have a look for those. Now then, let me just very quickly... I mean, the thing is, now that these are all unpacked like this, we can't really send those to anybody, can we? So why don't I just pop those into the boot of my car and then just get them out of the way? Why don't I just do that? Hmm? Hmm? Why don't I just do that? If anybody gets a bundle at home that looks like that, you've had my bundle. <laughs> Touched by the Hillard. Now then, natural history. Natural history. I want to show you these fat quarters. These just launched a couple of days ago. These are absolutely gorgeous. Um, now you could use this mixed with some complementary solids to make my Casbar cushion or a quilt as well. That would work. This is beautiful. These are our fatter than normal fat quarters. You get four of them on a panel in the pink, the charcoal grey, the cream and the sage. Featuring butterflies and birds. They're beautiful. Um, each one of these actually, I think personally, I would make up into a pillow with a border of one of the complementary solids with pom-poms around the outside edge. And I might mix and match the colour of pom-poms or I might do cream pom-pom, pink, you know, and so on. Or I might mix and match those. That's gorgeous. 19 99 for that. Completely exclusive here at Sewing Street. Now we do also do a complementary bundle of solids that goes with it. And I love this selection of solids actually. This is beautiful on its own. $12.99 is phenomenal for two metres of fabric. Let me just show you the colours. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of place them in the corners. You've got, this one here is a natural. Is it? No, it's not natural. That is vanilla. Thank you. Vanilla. This one is slate. This one is sage. And then this one is pomegranate. 
Don't those look fabulous? So it might be a case of border and backing for your pillows. It might be that you mix them up. You might mix and match these a little more, for example. Okay. You might do piping around a pla you know, pl say plain cushion, just this on the front, piping and then a backing. That would look glorious, really smart. Um, I just think this fabric's beautiful, isn't it? Um, and these complementary colours, now you could actually cut rectangles from these and from these, mix and match them, create my Casbar Kaz cushion. That would also work really well. $19.99 for the panel, completely exclusive, birds and butterflies, natural history. And then we've also got that lovely complementary bundle of solids. It does work really well with this bundle, doesn't it? Which is just $12.99. There we are, details on screen. Now, I can't believe it, but we're already at break time. So we're going to have a little break. When we come back, we'll have Wendy Orlando and her travel bag. I'm ready for a trip. See you in a couple of minutes. Town Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. We are moving home. From Wednesday the 26th of January, Sewing Street and Yarn Lane are moving to Freeview Channel 73. We will still be on Sky Channel 670, YouTube and Facebook Live as normal. It's only the Freeview Channel that is changing. Keep your eyes peeled on our Facebook, Instagram and our email newsletter for more details. And if you watch us on Freeview, don't forget to tune into Freeview Channel 73 from 8am on Wednesday the 26th of January. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table 
is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my sewing streak journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Welcome, welcome friends. Welcome back to Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard, slightly later than normal. So I'm going to speed through the different bundles we've got so we have maximum time with the Orlando uh, Wendy, who's here with her amazing travel bag. Now, I don't know about you, but I am so ready for a little trip away, a night away, a weekend. Actually, we did have a cheeky night away in Manchester last week. Um, ideal this for a night away. This is a gorgeous version, isn't it? And it's proving very, very popular. It's Wendy Orlando's travel bag. Uh, just a few remaining in this colorway, actually. It'll be very quick if you get this. Nice big zip. You'll need to add that in to your kit. Um, you don't get that in your kit, so add a zip in. We'll get the dimensions from Wendy very shortly. H640 inside as well. We've got those things on the show, um, but it is great. And what you've also got are some pockets on the outside as well for a few little essentials that you might want to have easy access to. Nice sturdy handles as well. There are three of these ones left. I'm just going to give you a quick heads up there if you want to grab that one. Now, so what we're looking at today is Wendy Orlando's travel bag. The bundles are $27.99. The one that's on screen right now is called Sunday Stroll and it's from, um, the fabrics are from, let me just show you, we've got Moda. Sunday Stroll, you've got a metre of that, and then you've also got a metre of cotton canvas in this beautiful sort of sky blue, uh, 150 wide, that's an extra wide on that, and then you're also getting the instructions, I'm going to make this bag so many times, Wendy, I'm going to make this bag so many times, I can't wait for the demos, we're whizzing through so that we can crack straight on, so that's the Sunday Stroll, uh, it's about to sell out, but there is still a chance for you if you're really, really quick on that one. Now, bundle number two. This is lovely. This has got a little bit of a Mary Poppins vibe to it for me because it's a canvas. Almost like the sort of carpet bag style. Uh, so you're getting, this is going to be your main fabric. Look at that. That is so cool. Really nice. So you're getting that... Um, tapestry, woven tapestry for the outside of your bag and then that's teamed with this gorgeous kind of deep uh, sage green for your lining, for your handles. You've also got a little bit on that pocket as well so just a little bit of trimming on there in that green. Now your tapestry, 80% cotton, 20% polyester. Just keep that in mind when you're ironing. Use a two spot iron, I would recommend for that, two spot iron. A little bit heavier weight than the other. So if you like a little bit sort of weightier bag, this would be a good option. If you like the sort of slightly more traditional look as well. Price is the same though, $27.99 for your weave tapestry. Again, you're getting Wendy's fabulous instructions. It's all about bags for me at the moment, Wendy. I'm just loving bag too. making. Me you too. too. Yes, me too. Just love it. It's so, because you, you know, it scratches that itch. I want to make something. I've got some lovely fabric, but also it's a day or a weekend project, isn't it? It doesn't take a huge amount no. of time. Like and then there's quilt. that sort of, what am I going to do with another quilt? We don't have that because I've always got a use for another oh, yes. bag. Yes. Lovely, so giftable. Now, the next one up, this is a lovely version. Really like this. You've got the pheasant canvas. How cool is that? Now, you could have quilted. The bag isn't quilted, but you could quilt it. And I'm thinking diagonal cross hatching, going through, or even through in between. So you don't end up going through the pheasants themselves, but you wouldn't need to mark it. 
just keep uh, keep a motif in mind. So this will be the outside, and then you've got this sort of um, dusty lilac canvas, and this is for your handles. That's 100% cotton, that one. This one, 80% cotton, 20% polyester. So again, a two-spot iron on that. 140 centimetres wide, this one. The cotton canvas, 150 wide. So they're both extra wide. You're getting a lot of fabric in that bundle. That is lovely. Now, this is the version that Wendy's actually working with. Are we allowed to just show very quickly a little tiny bit of that bag? Just very quickly, Wendy, if you don't mind just grabbing that, just to show how those two fabrics work together. How gorgeous is that? I love that. Me too. Love it. Smash him. You're also getting your instructions, of course. All right. Next one. Disney. Foxes. Foxes. The little foxes. And I love, again, the colour of this cotton canvas that goes with. That is lovely. Instructions. Ochre cotton canvas. And then this is cute. You've got your little foxes, all picked out in grey on a nice sort of natural um, weave. 80% cotton, 20% polyester, this one. And then your 100% cotton canvas in ochre, which is that gorgeous kind of, almost like an antique gold, isn't it? Really lovely. And again, you're going to see that in the handles and in the trim on the pockets. Do we use this for the lining as well, Wendy? We do indeed. So the whole bag comes out of this. It does. Amazing. You are getting loads of fabric because both of these fabrics are wider than normal, um, which is always lovely. I'm thinking I might have enough fabric left over from that to make a little purse or a pouch. Mm, oh, Wendy, you tease. <laughs> You'll see later. I'll show you what I mean. So that is <laughs> the vintage <laughs> Fox travel bag. I just want a weekend in the country, thanks. That bag, I could cram everything in there. No problem. And then our last version is Minnie Mouse. Minnie Mouse. This is licensed fabric, okay, featuring Minnie and a little kitty cat companion. Very cute. This will be for your outer bag and then a black cotton canvas that goes with this for the pocket trims and also for the handles as well. Absolutely smashing combination. $27.99 for that. 100% cotton canvas and outer fabrics. Okay. So the only two things you'll need to add, well, three things you need to add for this. You need a zip. And zip-wise, Wendy, can I just ask what length of zip do we need? 20 a, a 20, 20 inch, inch yeah. is advisable. So a 20 inch down. nylon zip that you're going to cut down a you're little bit. You're going to cut it down. Okay, cool. Um, also some kind of padding, wadding. And Wendy, what did you use for this a, bag? My favourite, H640. I knew you were going to say <laughs> you that. You knew I was going to say that. H640. Do I need more than one pack? Uh, we will one need pack um, the metre pack. You need the metre pack? Do, yes. Fine. Metre by 90 centimetres, that'll do it, oh, is that Because it? It, actually you do need 38 inches by 28 inches, oh, that's perfect. what you need. Perfect, great. So that will cover it. So a pack of H640 on screen now for 9 99 You could use quilt batting, mm -hmm. regular quilt batting. You could use bosal for this in our form, couldn't you, if you wanted a firmer... You can. The thing that I would say, and it does state it in the pattern here, is I don't trim away from the edges. Now with H640, this and most machines will cope with it. Yep. If you're using something thicker, yep. just trim the wadding away from the seam allowance. Yeah, or cut it half an inch smaller and yeah. don't have it in your seam. Mm -hmm. Zip-wise, we've got a couple of options. Um, one of these might work for you. You've got a cream 20 inch zip or a black 20 inch zip. We've got th both of those on the show. The cream zip is on screen at the moment, 249. <laughs> you have to be quick here. And then there's the black one on screen. Again, 249 for a 20 inch zip. All right, smashing. Instructions on their own are also available. If you've got fabric at home that you're thinking, that bag would look amazing. Or maybe you've seen a fabric today. Um, if you go 18th of October this uh, last year, 
you can see a full demo of this bag. Um, although Wendy said to me earlier on she didn't finish mm. it, so today she's aiming to finish yep. it. So I'm going to buzz off in a second and leave Wendy <laughs> to do her thing. But instructions on their own, 9.99. Details are on screen. Okay, that's more than enough of me, Wendy Orlando. Thank you. Um, How was your hour off, by the way? Did you just sit in your Winnebago and have a massage? You know exactly what I did in my hour off. <laughs> I do. Because I, I do. have got a Dolly Donut moment. I do apologise. I have made it <laughs> in the Minnie Mouse, which George. is adorable. I used the wrong colour. So I used that colour. Ah, you lilac. So I did. I, I was a bit of a Dolly Donut. So what I've done in the break is I've just changed the handle so you will get the black. So please yep. ignore this bit. This that would will be black, be black, wouldn't it? Yeah, yes. which will look so smart. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. I did have a little bit of a Dolly Donut moment. I do apologise. And also, I just but, want... But, Wendy, just sorry to cut in, but oh, actually oh. what that demonstrates as well is that the pattern, you, there's so many different ways that you could make this bag. <laughs> Um, and mixing the colours is a great one, that little pop of colour in the binding. That's exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say we, it, it's actually a lined pocket. I don't do binding if I don't have to, so I add it on to the lining and makes the binding. Oh, it looks lovely. Um, I love that. I will just that say, is quilted, isn't it, that bag? It, well, this is what I was going to say. So with this one, um, if you've bought the pattern yourself, it does state in there that the lining fabric needs to be extra wide and the reason for that is because you cut the handles out of the lining fabric okay that's why you need more but um, i was a little bit concerned when i was sent this because it's directional mm -hmm. now when you've got this front pocket if you've got just standard fabric it's going to be sideways this fabric however is wide so Great, i was yes. able to get the pocket and the bag all out of the same orientation. So Minnie is not on her side. Fabulous, which we wouldn't want. And you've used white, extra you know, wide fabric. You get enough for all of them. to put a pocket on each side oh, with the awesome. extra wide. So actually, like my version, I noticed this earlier on actually, which I, I thought was absolutely a design feature mm. and very it, it got was pockets a design, on one yeah. side, no pockets mm. on the other. But actually, it, could I do that on all of the fabric options that we've got here? I really apologise. All I know is that this one and the one I'm working on, yep. definitely, I don't think you can with that version. Ah. I'm sure I would have done if I could have done, yep. because that's what I do. Um, but, see, I didn't want pockets on both sides, because no, when no. you're carrying it on your shoulder, yep. it would bump against your hip. Yep. But I thought, if it's there, just Why use not? it. But, so I've made this, and if... And the instructions are all there with all the dimensions. If you reduce everything, and I mean everything, the corners, the length and the width by half, you get a really neat little bag. That's adorable. How cool is that? And you get, yeah. you, there is enough to get that out as well. That's awesome. Um, and what I have done with this, because I stay away quite a lot, I've actually put poppers on the end. Because I, I, I don't particularly like hmm. it looking like it's got little ears. Sure. And then what I do is, when I get to the hotel, I hang that over my coat hanger yep. in my wardrobe so that I don't forget it. Brilliant. But today, I shouldn't do this because it's nothing to do with it. A little peep, I've kept my pom-pom makers in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got those at 12 o'clock exactly. over on Yarn I Lane. Shouldn't have, so. I shouldn't have teased you there. But yes, so if anyone buys the pattern and reduces every single measurement by half, you will be able to make a matching little bag. But still use a normal-sized seam allowance. Use exactly. Well, I, I would go to a quarter of an inch oh, on that because this inch. one is a centimetre. Right, yeah. um, because it's a much bigger bag and you've got quite a bit of bulk. But it's nothing to stop you using centimetres and centimetres. It's ace. I love it. Wendy, oh, I love and it. I quilted it. Sorry, to your question, that's yep. what you were saying to me. I quilted this one. Um, you're a braver man than I am because with this one, I did think about it. Yep. But am I right in thinking that unless these are they partridges? Pheasants. Pheasants, that's the one. <laughs> unless these pheasants. Pe pe Pheasants. 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 These pheasants. <laughs> <laughs> Do apologise. Oh, Wendy, you are partridges. Pheasants. <laughs> Um, unless they are exactly the same place on the panel, both yeah. panels, would the um, quilting lines not be out? Oh, when you join the front yes. to the back? Mm. Well, I wouldn't worry oh, okay. about things That's like that. That's fine. Because I did think about that because I was going to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, again, I, I, first thing... So, I... if you were going to quilt it, Wendy, <laughs> you, what would you do? Because you right. wouldn't quilt it with the lining fabric, would you? Oh, no. What you would do... I'm glad you asked that. 
Um, again, I'm, I'm so, sorry, that was very pursed lips, wasn't it? I didn't realise I was on screen, but I was like, yeah. <laughs> just checking. Did you tell me just off checking. then? Did you tell me off no, then, no, Stuart? No, no, no. Um, what you would do, and the reason, again, I'm trying to make everything for those that are fairly new, so yeah. new to bag making, new to quilting, new to sewing, I start off in a square. Some people could start off with it this shape if they wanted to because the corners are cut out, but this way, you can then you've got corners to draw your lines. Mm. Now, you'll notice that that from there to there is really long. Mm. So I got a piece, a straight edge that was long enough. So I got a, a bit of wood. So I just put it on there and I drew from there to there. Mm -hmm. Because then when you go further out, mm. your ruler will be long enough. Right. So you can see here, it's not quite long enough to go from there to go from there to there. Mm. So if you've got two, you could put two rulers against yep, each other together. and just draw. So line them up and put them up there mm -hmm. and then draw along there. And then once you've got that line drawn, these will fit. Yes. And for this one, I did two inches apart. I normally yep. like an inch and a half. Yep. But with um, little Minnie here, she did work best with two inches. Fine. Um, and then I drew the lines. So all you the would lines. just layer up like your H640 H640 and your outer. Don't put your handle on. Of Do course. not put your handle on, yes. I've, I've just gone one step yep. ahead. So you've just got your plane. And also, um, just be patient with H640. It's absolutely incredible, but because you're using a thicker weight fabric, mm. you do need to give it time for that the glue to set. Oh, so when you're fusing it. So when you're putting a bit of extra time, bit of yes. steam. Just you're going to put it over with the iron and go, oh, that's not stuck. So just spend a little bit of time because these two now are one layer of fabric. Brilliant. Because I fuse them together. Um, so do so that first. So we don't need to quilt it, but if we wanted to, your we one can. isn't quilted. No, and it's so beautiful. yours isn't. Um, Mini is. So Min then once Mini once is. it's got, then you use your lining as a separate lining for inside. You do, yes. So quilters, no quilt sandwich, no. just top and batting. Lining and that's why I love H640 because it's 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 very dense on the back yeah. and it glides through the machine. Yeah, well, I often quilt things without any backing on, just a top and a, a batting. But if I wouldn't with craft get... wadding. I would always put, like the carrier, so I would always put a scrap, not a scrap, a piece of fabric that you don't mind using that won't be seen. Yeah. Because once you put that fabric on there, it's then gone in the lining, yeah. isn't it? Well, I always re recommend something like Osnaberg mm -hmm. for that, but pre-wash. Mm -hmm. If you're going to use Calico or Osnaberg, pre-wash it before you use it for your quilting because it will, there's generally more shrinkage on a fabric yeah. like that and when you wash your bag and this bag will be washable yeah. won't it there's nothing um, on there that i mean the, the zip is plastic and yeah. s uh, nylon sorry right. so there's nothing in there so anyway yes tell us how to make that right so the, the first thing that you do is cut out your all your pieces and um, as I've said, that you will need to worry about the orientation if they do have a direction on the fabric. So I cut this one out and then I had enough over here on the fabric to be able to cut the pocket out. Mm -hmm. So do that first. If you've got fabric that isn't wide enough, then to cut, to cut the pocket out, you need to go along the fabric um, and the, the pattern will be on its side. So that's why it's better to use directional with the extra wide fabric. So that's that. Right, so I'm going to cut the pocket out now. So I've left that for you to see. Because with the pocket, um, it has kind of pretend by piping on it. So it's got an edging on it. Mm -hmm. And that is because I don't like binding things. Okay. I, I just, why, why, you know, it, it wastes time for me. So this is a self-binding method. This is a self-binding one. Oh, wow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the fabric and as I say, the sizes are all in there, but I'm just using this one as a template. So I'm going to trim this is where I could have done with a big rotating mat. But then Oh, we've got a big mat. But then a huge table to rotate <laughs> it on. <laughs> I don't you just have walk that. around the table. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that. Well, I do all my cutting out, as you know, on the floor at home. <laughs> yeah. I, I cut out everything's on the floor. And um, Paul came in this morning and he went, morning, and I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> what I do. <laughs> I just like sitting on the floor. Now, little question from Collector in, who's in Staffordshire. Mm -hmm. Morning. Would you need the H640 with the tapestry fabric? I have just ordered it, Mandy. The heavier weight tapestry. Do you still need some padding? 
This is a, a personal choice. Mm. If you use wadding and tapestry, I would definitely recommend that you cut away from your seams, the wadding, cut the wadding away because you're going to have an awful lot of bulk mm. in there. Mm. It probably wouldn't need it, but it's going to be a floppy bag. So if you do want a bit more rigidity into your bag, then yes, I would. Yeah. But it is, as you can see, it's a substantial fabric. I love it is. It is. A, it is a, he a heavier weight. And you would get some structure from that fabric. But yeah, I really like the H640 because for me, me I always refer to H640 as a volume fleece. So it just creates that. It's softly padded. It's thin. It's not even as thick as a quilt batting. So it just adds a little bit of extra smushiness. <laughs> Smushiness. A, a bag or a, yeah, it's smushiness. <laughs> like it. um, that was the tapestry, by the way, that woven tapestry, beautiful. The H640 is on screen now. It's 9.99. You get a one meter by 90 centimeter piece. It's fusible on one side, heat activated, so you just iron it to the wrong side of your fabric. And always, when you're applying H640, iron on the fabric rather than the batting, rather on the, on that um, H640. Iron from the fabric and just I would always start with a low iron, a lower iron setting. Um, and just and be just, patient, just be, be patient. patient. Just, just don't think you're going to get it adhered with one sweep. No. You, you do need to be patient. All of the interfacings, all of the um, Vlieseline pro uh, products take longer to fuse than mm -hmm. most of us are prepared to yeah. fuse for. And I think we do get a bit frustrated because sometimes we think, oh, oh we just want to get on with it. Well, the other thing as well, I saw a really good little video from Mark Francis the other day on his um, Facebook page about fusing interfacing. And he was like, you know, most of us when we're applying these things, we're like rubbing the iron mm -hmm. up and down. It says on the thing, eight seconds. So literally put the iron on top of your work and stand back mm -hmm. and leave it there for eight, seven, six and so on and then lift the iron off and place it down and then if you've got especially a piece like that mm. that's a lot of eight seconds so you mm. do need to be prepared um, but once it's adhered it's there. there and the thicker fabrics it will take a little bit longer yep um, Minnie didn't take quite as long because she's a little bit thinner mm -hmm. um, but Mickey did also with Minnie what I did do um, just be a little bit careful when you're using a darker fabric behind a lighter fabric um, this one here this sorry this side here um, it's just the fabric behind it. There. I mean, it's sold out, by the way. Oh, no, no, no. But she's beautiful. She's she gorgeous. Um, yes, so the fabric behind here, that's it, there, um, that is the lining. Now, that's going to be black, don't forget. So you may, it may change that colour very slightly. But all I did to sort that out was I just put a piece of wadding along that section of the pocket. Mm, mm. So then it's got a barrier between... The dark and a bit back. of extra padding. Yeah, and a bit of extra padding, yes. Yeah, you could always put something like a lightweight mm. interfacing there as well. Um, the bat quilt batting um, that you could use for this project, we've got heirloom premium cotton crib size batting, which is an 80-20 mix, 80 cotton, 20 polyester for 10.99. You could use that for the whole bag, couldn't you? Yeah. It's not yeah. a fusible though, yeah. so you might want to add in something like some uh, 550 quilt basting spray, 505, yeah. 550. I thought you'd upgraded made. then. <laughs> I use 505. <laughs> um, that's one of my go-tos. That would yeah. be one of my top tens in the, in the sewing room because even sometimes um, H640 is only fusible on one side. Sometimes you need it on both. You need it on both. Um, and a little tip when cutting the pocket out because the pocket is half an inch longer longer than the um, the front yeah. so I cut the front out and then instead of cutting the back out I use the front as a template and then along the top edge I just put an extra half an inch on so I'm running the ruler up here and then I've got a half an inch extra and then I'm going to trim it because with something like this you're working with quite a big piece of fabric and I don't really want to be folding it in half but that's just a little tip because this does need to be half an inch wider than the other. Right. Oh, damn. I'm all in a dither with my mat today. It's been <laughs> one of those days today, hasn't it? Yeah. Has been I a, think we've done very challenges. well considering what we've been up against you today. Have. <laughs> you have. You have. I mean, I just there. sit here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Now. I don't just sit here, do I? I do no, you don't. Absolutely that, not. Now, um, I'm going to leave that should I do contrast? No, let's leave the cotton and the thread that's in there. Right, so you've got your pocket that is half an inch 
longer. It is, it, that's longer, isn't it, that way, even though it's... Taller. Taller, right, OK. So we're going to place right sides together. The canvas is really hard to work out which side is which. So do you know I, I just pick a side. And then you can pin or clip this into place, but I'm already seeing the time, so I'm just going to go for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do a quarter of an inch seam. Now, the bundle that Wendy's using is on screen right now. It's the vintage pheasants. You've got that gorgeous pheasant canvas for the outside. Then you've got that really lovely, um, I would call that puce. Okay. Wouldn't you? I've never heard of the word puce. Oh, really? No, I have not. It's just lilac. All right. Okay, lilac. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to sell you the 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 colour puce either with with my quick story. Um, I think it was Marie Antoinette caught Marie Antoinette. It became a new colour, really? and and I think it was Marie Antoinette was wearing it, and somebody said that um, described her as looking like a flea, which in French is la puce. La puce. Very so it nice became it? known, that colour became known as puce, which literally means flea. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tumbleweed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that's funny. Now I've got a little tip. Oh, I'm full of tips today, aren't I? <laughs> you are. <laughs> I'm full of something today. I'm full of beans. And I haven't had breakfast yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> So if you if you press to the lining side, the puce side, the puce side. <laughs> now I don't, I will not be using that word because Lilac. I do not like that Lilac. word. Lilac. That sounds like a not a very nice name. <laughs> puce. Yes. Yeah, so if you press to the lining side, yeah, and that's the side that's cut half an inch, half an taller. inch taller, mm -hmm. and then. You want to put right sides together. Ah, match up the bottom. Yep. Yes, you match the bottom. Sorry, it's just not behaving today, so I'm going to do it this way. You match up your bottom. Now, you can, if you want to, pin it. But the most important thing is to press from the bottom edge upwards. Okay. You don't want to be pressing from the top edge downwards. You want to go from the bottom edge upwards. And it is... Um, the, the, the one thing that we don't have here is the luxury of time. You will mm. have time to make sure that you get this really nicely yeah. pressed. We do try, don't we, Stuart? We do indeed. We do. We're triers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> I knew you were going to I'm certainly trying. <laughs> oh, dear. But Wendy, I use this method all the time. It creates such a smart top to pocket, <laughs> See? doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. it really does. It's yeah. brilliant. Because you've got the lining and yes. the binding in one step. Exactly. And that's what I was just about to say to you. Um, you are you are oh, that is one yummy. step you are one step ahead that of me is today. Yummy. So this is nice and thick because it has the fabric that you've turned when you pressed back. Padding out yes. your binding, so isn't it? So if you'd have done it the other way, yep. there's nothing wrong with it, but you're going to have a very thin top, whereas this one almost creates binding for yes. you. Yes, yes. So, and I, I always do it that way. And then so do you top stitch it? I do, do you? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say... Where do you top stitch? Well, I top stitch just below. So... So in your pheasant fabric? Yeah. That gotcha. I think look like partridges. <laughs> I don't even call them partridges, yeah. it's not a problem. Um, yes, I do it just very slightly in my pheasant fabric. Got you. Yeah. <laughs> I need to put my teeth in Think this about morning. It. <laughs> um, because I um I try, but I'm not the neatest at sewing in a straight line. I get sidetracked, this is the trouble. And I've got Jeez, you get distracted by things. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. You're a beautiful butterfly, Wendy. <laughs> I'm a flitter, aren't I? I flit. I know that I do. I know. I know it's one of my habits that I do flit. If I see something else over the other side of the corner that I think looks more exciting, I'll go over there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I am a flitter. I love it. I love yes. it. 
Um, and I have gone off a little bit here, but as I say, we are doing it under pressure of time. But also, when it's in the background fabric, it doesn't matter, does it? Oh no, you I've gone onto the top. You could sew. You could sew <laughs> along the the binding edge as well, couldn't you? Really close to the binding edge, if you preferred. If you need to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I like to come a little bit down. That from, looks from the ace. Edge. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? But I like to come a little bit down because I find that, and I do this with all my bags as well when I do a top stitch. If you so right close to the edge it has a tendency to turn over gotcha. whereas if you come back at least a quarter of an inch then it just makes it little, sit a little bit nicer right the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put our handles on now i'm not going to show you how to put the handles on because i showed you in the last one this is what took the time so you can re-watch that it was october the 11th mm. oh wouldn't would it was it that was my son's birthday i don't think I would. um so you'll attach both your handles first and then you're going to place the 18th yeah i was going to say i didn't think it would have been the 11th i wouldn't have done that i don't think um you're going to lay them over so that this line matches and then the side edges matches got now, you i will just warn you a little bit of a word of warning if you have quilted the top layer mm -hmm. the pocket may be slightly wider because naturally with quilting as you sew it's going i mean it's not going to be much but it will pull it in mm -hmm. um so you may need to just trim this down doesn't matter just just do it because the main thing is that it fits the bag perfect so if you've quilted trim the pocket to yes. the size of the background yes um and then what we're going to do so I, and again i have shown how to do this but you would sew all the way around the edge Mm -hmm. And this is just to hold those two fabrics together. Understood. But I'm going to pin them because um, I'm a little bit tight for time and I want to make sure I get to the zip. So you would, you would just, but make sure that you are in within the seam allowance because you want to make sure that these stitches don't show. Understood. And then we're going to cut, oh, I really do need a bigger one, don't I? We're going to cut um, four inch corners um, out of here. So I've already done that on this side, but they would have had this, this fabric here would have had stitching in it to hold it. I'm not gonna do that, so you'll see mine's a bit floppy. And then they are cut top and bottom. And this is the secret to creating an easy box. Because mm -hmm. boxes aren't, they're sometimes they're a little bit scary, aren't they, boxes? Well, this scary. is a shape that I've often thought, oh, I'd love to do something in that sort of shape, but I always think, oh, how do they do it? But it's actually really simple, isn't it? It's just boxed top and bottom. I've done it the simplest form, um, because again, as I say, I want to make sure that everyone uh, gets to their sewing machines. Yeah. I don't want them sitting in the corner. I want them to get them out yeah. and have a go. Um, and be successful. And I've, I have got, I've made this, <laughs> I've got loads of these, <laughs> loads of these bags. Oh gosh, yeah. Loads. And um, people go, oh, I love your bag. And it's like, yeah, I made that. It's really, really it useful is. size and shape, isn't it? Now, it does seem a little bit wasteful here because I have put wadding on and then cut out. So you could have done it the other way. So you could have cut these corners out and then put wadding on. But of course, if you needed to quilt it, you need to do that first anyway. But look what I've got. I have got little coasters <laughs> oh fab yeah so i'm going to bind them yeah and make little coasters so fab, i've got eight great. of those so nothing's ever wasted no. with me that's fab i've the adopted the word frugal not that type. wendy's using there is called vintage pheasants and you get that lovely pheasant canvas print on the outside that's 80 percent cotton and 20 percent uh, polyester and then you also get that lovely lilac cotton canvas for the handles and also for the lining of it that's extra wide that fabric isn't it so you get plenty of fabric to work with remember you can quilt it or not quilt it you will need a pack of h640 and that is enough one pack of h640 is enough to make the whole bag so you only need one pack of h640 I am just Nine trimming the edges off, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so they just need to be the same yeah. size, don't yes, they, when you they put do. them together. And, and of course, any time anytime you put some wadding onto something, it does bring it in slightly. Mm -hmm. So don't worry, uh, just make, make it fit as long as the pocket matches that. Right, so we've got that. I think I've just put them together, haven't I? Lovely. I thought that felt a bit thick. Brilliant. <laughs> I need to go and have a lie down in a dark room, don't I? No, you're not allowed. No, 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 no. Right. Now, the next thing that we want to do, now this is optional. Um, I know Rebecca um, said she wouldn't because she'd like a little secret compartment underneath, but you need to stitch a line of stitching 
along here mm -hmm. because this bit's going under the bag. Mm -hmm. So if you don't do that and you put something in your pocket, it could slip down underneath. Now that doesn't matter if you want to hide it, but of course you don't really want something at the bottom of your bag, do no, you? No, not really. Not really. Because it'd probably be something I'd want like my sweeties. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no, I'd want them. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going I always to give that as the best reason for the sewing up the, the hole in the lining, otherwise your sweeties oh, will yes, fall through. Yes, <laughs> I'm just going to sew a line of stitching along there. Now it's it's just, it doesn't need to hold it securely, so I'm, I've increased the stitch length to get it to go through. Okay. Now you can, if you want to, use a walking foot here, so I'm actually going to engage the walking foot on this one. Um, so you can do that, or um, I've made them without. So you yeah. can do either or, but you can see with the walking foot, the fabric is going through at the same time. They're obviously clever, aren't they? Those integrated, they are even feet, feet are they amazing. They are absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, it stopped me putting my walking foot on sometimes because I was a bit lazy because I knew that in a few stitches time, I'd have to change it and yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. right, now I'm going to keep them on. The next thing you want to do is decide how big you want your pockets. Now, I actually went down the centre mm -hmm. to create three pockets, but depending what you want this centre section, you could put it any way you want. But mm -hmm. my logic was that if you sew down here, it conceals this even more. Yeah. So I'm going to draw a line from where I've stitched here. I'm going to put my ruler across so that I know I'm going straight. And another top tip here is to sew from the bottom line upwards rather than sew from the top downwards. And why is that? If you sew from the top downwards, by the time you get to here, you might have a little bit of bunching. Okay. If you start from the bottom and work upwards, you can see that the fabric is moving and allows, and then when I get to the top, you won't have any bunching. Cool. That's a great tip. That's do you a not, great tip. Do you not tip. do that tip? Yeah, I do. Oh, I knew you did. I was, I'm trying to teach you something that you don't know. You but teach me lots of things <laughs> I don't know, Wendy. Just none of them about sewing. I was going to say, <laughs> nothing to do with sewing. <laughs> no, you do. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We all do things slightly differently, don't we? Yes, we do. We've yes. all got our own little methods. Yes. I've always wanted to make this style of box bag. Oh, and you have okay. taught me how to do this. Yes. This is my big take today. Yes. Right. Are we okay for time? Because I know we were... We've got about four minutes on demo. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So what would I you... I tried to say as little as possible. What would be more beneficial to you, to show the zip or to show the... Well, I do the corners. <laughs> well, whatever you want to do. You right. said about doing the zip. Yes, the zip. Um, I'm going to put a white one in so you can see it, but black would work well with it, grey would work um, with the um, pheasants. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> um, and it is... Call them what you like. <laughs> ...intentionally longer, that I've made the zip longer because we cut it down. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to place right side of fabric to right side of zip. So the right side is the little teeth sticking up and you'll see that the zip, the zip pull is on that side. So we place it on there. Now, I am a huge fan of a glue stick because it puts... This is brilliant for putting zips in. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're working with them, Especially with the canvas, you do need to be a little bit careful because the edges are a bit fragile. So you can see that I'm just doing little strokes rather than pulling it all the way across sure. the top. And then I'm placing right sides together, like that. And it's quite warm in here today, so I think the glue, we're I'm going to have a little bit of trouble with this glue. Um, it's blue, do not worry about that, it dries completely clear. And um, if you've already got the pen, you can buy the refills, although I'm not sure if you can, because every time they come in stock, I buy them all. Just saying, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and then I've cut my lining out to the same size. So you've already cut out I've the corners already, on that piece. I've already pre-cut that because I, I could, that. I, yes, I could see what was going to happen. And then I place the right side of my lining to the top of my zip. Gotcha. And then I have just realised something. Go on. I haven't got my zipper foot. Okay. That is so unlike me. I normally carry him everywhere with me. So That's all right. Don't worry. So then you would sew down there. Yep. And then you would open it back out and then you would press. And I will show you on this one because sure. I've done this in a contrast colour so you can see. Mm -hmm. Then you want to stitch a little bit away from the zip. And what that does is that takes the fabric away more Just importantly. Bring that over to the left slightly, sorry. More importantly from the back. 
Yeah, it's the other way tiny bit. That's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, so I've sewn a line of top stitch down here, mm -hmm. and that stops the zip. When you pull the bag open, it stops the zip catching. Um, so you would do that on that side and then that side. And then you need to trim the zip down, but make sure that when you trim this end down, that you pull the pull back first. I've cut the zip oh, pull off before yes. now, Wendy. Yes, the amount of times that I have done that. And also what I like to do is I like to put a line of stitch in. When I've done, when I've cut the zip, I then put a line of stitching because then if you do accidentally open it, yeah. you're not going to pull it off. And then when you've done that, so you would do that on both sides and then you would put it on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. And then you create the box corners because I know I'm going to have to talk this because we haven't got time. That's halfway. fine. I mean, <laughs> the, the thing is, it's completely impossible to demonstrate it how is. to make an entire bag in it, an hour and it, include time to see all the fabrics, it isn't, is, it? isn't it? And no one expects you to make a whole bag <laughs> I wanted hour. to do but it today. Talk, I know. Yeah. Talk us through the last um, stages. It's not a problem. So with the, um, with the corners, once you've, you, what you would do, you'll have your whole bag made. So this will be along this side. And then, sorry, you can see I've had to unpick the handles because mm. I did the wrong color. Then you're going to sew the bottom edge, yep. the side edge and the side edge on the main. Yep. And then on the lining fabric, you sew the side and the side, and then you sew leaving enough to get your hand through and the bag through. Yeah. Um, don't be tempted to leave the hole at the end. You, if, if possible, you always want to make sure that you've sewn the corner rather than leaving the space at the corner because you'll find it harder to turn in. So then when you've done that, so I've put that there. So then you put the, you open the corners out and sew the corners together. Mm -hmm. And then the middle corner has got the lining and the outer fabric. So it's going to be a big sandwich, a big, big sandwich. And that's what creates this box here. Got you. So it's, it's a really, really simple way of making a boxed bag. Really, really simple. I haven't got time to, to put that together that little bit, have I? No, no we, not no, this time, No, that's sorry. absolutely fine. Um, if you are going to do the court, because you will have enough fabric in this print, make sure when you sew the side seam up, that you line up your where your two pockets meet, mm -hmm. because it's little things like this that will when if you're going to sell them. And I know with the Disney fabric, am I right in thinking, Stuart, that is for personal use only? Yeah, the licensed right. fabric is just yes. for personal use. So this fabric that I'm showing now, you is just for personal use. The other fabrics that aren't licensed, if you are selling something and yours looks like this. They're going to come to you to buy mm, it. Whereas if mm. it, it's little things like that that you is can that do okay in your with your sewing. patterns. With my pattern, please make as many as you want. All I say is that you don't copy, share, or pass the pattern, pattern. to someone else. And if you could just tag me and say that's even better, because I've I've loved seeing everyone's make. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, for sure. That will be fantastic. Fabulous. Wendy, we need to get our skates on because we're heading on over oh, to Yarn Lane together. Yeah. Thank you for explaining very those important stages. You're very welcome. Remember, of course, at home, if you've bought the bundle and, or you've bought the pattern, you've got every stage that you need. You can take your time going through the instructions uh, to make the complete bag. And thank you again, Wendy, for And those me lovely... if they need me. Of course. And me. But if you tag me and I don't go blue, okay. then... You then, you, yet. then it means that I can't see it. Fine. Um, so someone else, they're brilliant. They're, they're, they're brilliant. Thank Understood. You. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, uh, just a quick recap. The bundle that uh, Wendy was working with, the pheasant version that I've got right here. Uh, uh, those details are on screen for you. Vintage pheasants. You've got the canvas uh, with the pheasants on. Or grouse or... There we go, there it is. And that lilac canvas as well for the lining and for the handles and the, the pocket tops. Plus the instructions from Wendy. You'll make that pattern again and again and again. Fabulous, fabulous, love that. Now just a very quick recap on this uh, fat quarter bundle of fabrics that we had in the last hour. The Rose Terrace fat quarter bundle that I've used to make my boho um, Casbar cushion. There are 
far more of you uh, with this fat quarter bundle in your basket than we have stock of. So please, please check out your baskets on that, otherwise you're going to miss out. You get 14 glorious fat quarters. I've used them to create a very, very simple but effective big floor cushion. Um, you'd have enough fabric there to make two of them, plus some fabric for the backing. I'd use half a metre of backing fabric per cushion. There it is. If you wondered about how much pom-pom, three metres of pom-pom. Three metres of pom-pom. Wendy's already snaffled that cushion. I've told you, Wendy, that's my yoga cushion. It's going nowhere. Now, before we disappear and go off to Yarn Lane, let me just go through the menu for tomorrow. Here's how tomorrow is shaping up. At 8 a.m. it's fabulous fabric and fat quarters and then at 9 a.m. we've got Amanda Little. Not worked with Amanda before, looking forward to that, with her ombre French braid quilt. At 10 a.m. it's sewing room tools and then at 11 a.m. Amanda's back with paper, uh, sorry, bag and paperweights. At 12 o'clock, sewing machine hour. Great uh, morning tomorrow, looks like it's shaping up very nicely. Now, we're heading across to Yarn Lane. If you're watching us online, you'll need to um, just change to www.yarnlane.com and then watch live. Wendy's going to come across as well. She's got some great crochet projects to share with us. So I will see you in just a couple of minutes.